Okay. We've had no truck racing for five weeks. I trust we've all regrouped, and we're ready for some first track action in March. The last time we were all together, we saw two veterans battle it out to a nice clean finish. Everyone should be on their best behavior. We all know what can happen when we don't follow the rules. Now, point five to six miles of concrete is no place to be part time today. I expect you guys to be on your toes today. I'll expect you to make an appearance. While Toyota is supposed to a win, John Wood raced to free here last fall. And what a dinner set. Some call him the short track king. There are a million variables to factor in here today. And with BW getting into the mix, anything could happen. All right, let's have a good solid race. I'll see you in the wind. truck series heads back to its origins short track racing the bumping and banging begins at martinsville speedway speed channel's coverage of the nascar craftsman truck series pre-race show is presented by craftsman a beautiful day in southern virginia martinsville has 81 degree temperatures slight wind out of the south three miles an hour let's go down to ray dunlap who's with our bull sitter jack spray well, Rick, right now he's getting his pole award up here on the stage, but I want to reflect back a week ago to Augusta, Georgia, when Phil Mickelson got his green jacket. Hey, Jack, get over here because we got to talk some golf, man. Last week it was neat when Phil Mickelson won that golf tournament. Many people said he was the most deserving golfer to not have won a major. I would put your name on the list to be the most deserving driver to have never won at Martinsville. What is up with this racetrack? This is a tough racetrack, especially for somebody that drives like me, hard in the corner. So it's taken a lot of discipline to figure this thing out for me. And uh, the guys have done a great job. That Chris and Dave, they've worked so hard uh, since Atlanta to get our program stepped up, and they've done it. They've got a really good truck here. Obviously, I wish it was a little better, as everybody else I'm sure does. But uh, I think we got a shot. I mean, we got to try to keep it toward the front, stay out of trouble. And if that golf logic works for you, man, I'm all for it. Okay, congratulations on your 21st poll. Keep in mind, Jack Sprague has 23 career wins in the Craftsman Truck Series, and 18 of those have come from starting positions, one, two, or three, and four times he has won from the poll where he'll start today. Now let's check in with Wendy Norris, my broadcast partner. Green jackets and golf are great, Ray, but let's talk checkered flags. Who can forget this unbelievable finish five weeks ago at Atlanta when Bobby Hamilton inched in front of Mike Skinner for that win. Bobby, you must be on top of the world coming off of Atlanta. You sit third in points. What does that momentum do for you and the team? We sort of leave the racetracks as we go. You know, we, we have to look forward to the next race, and that was a cool victory for us. Square D being Atlanta, it's a huge market area for them. And uh, we go into Martinsville. My teammate's sitting on the outside pole in the Dickies Dodge, and Square D Dodge is solid again. So, you know, this type of racetrack, you got to have a lot of discipline and uh, take care of your brakes, take care of the tires, keep the nose on it, keep the back tires on it. A lot of work for the driver. So uh, we're just going to try to get out here with a good finish. All right, that's Bobby Hamilton looking for a second victory here at Martinsville. Rick? Well, let's take a look at our four top ten point standings. Travis Quapple, last year's series champion, up on top. Four points behind is Carl Edwards, our Daytona winner. And then you see Bobby Hamilton's name in third in the points with that amazing win at Atlanta one month ago. Hello, everyone. I'm Rick Allen, and joining me to call all the exciting action from the booth, Michael Waltrip and Phil Parsons. Now, Phil, there were three names that were obviously missing from the top ten. Ted Musgrave, Rick Crawford, and Jack Sprague. Is it that much more difficult for those guys to wait a month in between races until we get here? It's been excruciating for those guys. They wanted to race the day after Atlanta because they wanted to get their season on track. None of those guys has the start that they wanted to have, and they wanted to get back going. So it's been awfully painful for them, but it's also been painful for Travis Quapple and Carl Edwards and Bobby Hamilton because they were on a roll. They had momentum going. They had two good runs, each of them, and they wanted to race the next day after Atlanta to keep that momentum going. So nobody has liked the five weeks off. Uh, I haven't, Phil. Did you, do you remember the first two races of 2004? The finish at Daytona, all the action from down there, and then, of course, side by side, sideways to the checker flag at Atlanta. Take what you saw at those two places and multiply it by three or four because that's how much smaller Martinsville is than those two venues. We're going to have trucks all over each other, beating and banging. The new Goodyear tire works good for 10 or 15 laps. Then the drivers have to work with their throttles, use throttle control. They're going to be sideways. They're going to be all over each other. It's going to be good. 
Well, one guy who's really good at Martinsville is Dennis Setzer. And when we come back, we're going to take a little bit closer look at the short track ace. I haven't won a Craftsman truck race. I'd like to win one just so I could put that on my resume. Just tell all the people watching, same thing. I have run in this series, and I haven't won, and I don't like that. Mr. Martinsville, Darrell Waltrip, 52 cup starts at Martinsville, five for the truck side. He has 11 wins at this racetrack in the cup, but as he mentioned, no wins in the trucks. Let's go down to Ray Dunlap, who's with DW. And Rick, his truck number will be 11 today, which is certainly representative of all those wins here, Darrell. A fifth and a couple of sevenths in the Craftsman Truck Series, though, but the competition sure has stepped up with Toyota coming in. What's a realistic expectation today for old DW? Well, I'd like to be in the top 10. Uh, that's what I think I can do. Truck was pretty good in happy hour. Uh, the boys have just, you know, done a good job for me and uh, got Hammond and Larry Mack. Uh, just, you know, a lot of great memories. Hammond on the pit box and old Larry Mack up there being my spotter. It don't, you know, that's a lot of fun for me. I just, I hope people realize how much fun I have doing this because it's a thrill to get back out here and race a little bit. Well, we're sure glad to have you. Good luck today. Darrell Waltrip in the number 11 truck will start today in the 21st position. This race one year ago, Chad Chaffin was leading the race with three laps to go. When he ran out of fuel, Chad, you have another great truck today. You're starting on the outside front row. Who is your biggest competition? Well, this Diggs Dodge is running good, but you can start at Jack Sprague and work your way back through Bobby Hamilton, and there's a lot of fast trucks here. But, you know, we've proven time and time again we're fast, and uh, we're looking to prove we can win a race here today. What is the key to getting around this place? We've talked to a few drivers this afternoon. Well, I think you've got to just take care of your tires and take care of your brakes. It's The corners are very tight and the straightaways are very long. If you've got a good turning car that'll hook up and you can take care of it, you might get the job done. All right, thanks, Chad. Good luck today. Let's go back to Ray. Well, Wendy, all the way up towards the front of the grid, here is Travis Quapple. Man, what a great start to the season. A couple of top fives and uh, a difficult racetrack here. Travis, you didn't have much success last year. What do you expect today? Well, I don't know. I mean, hopefully we can just stay up front here in the top five like we get, we're going to start towards the front and it wasn't my best track last year by far so hopefully we got a little bit different setup under it and uh you know i've probably learned a little bit about the racetrack as well but the linux team did a great job this weekend we didn't unload very fast but hopefully we just stay up front keep the fenders on it be there at the end a lot of people have their eye on this toyota program travis and of course you've been a representative of how good it can be out of the box are you surprised at the success you guys have had already uh a little bit i guess i mean i know we're surrounded with uh with some great people and TRD's done a great job, you know, uh, behind the scenes, and they give us some great equipment. So uh, a little bit surprised, you know, we haven't had any, any problems more than anything, but, you know, great people and, you know, and great teams put some great results on the racetrack. Okay, Travis Quapple will roll off six today at Martinsville. And as you see, all of the drivers are strapped into their trucks, so there's only one thing left to do. We need to go down track side for those famous words in auto racing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, well, the most famous words in all of sports, the director of grocery merchandising for Kroger, Tim Plogger. Race fans, are you ready? Drivers, start your engine! DW's got the engine fired up, as do the other 35 drivers getting ready to tackle Martinsville. It's a beautiful day to get back to short track racing. Back to Speed Channel for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Kroger 250. Let's take a look at the U.S. Army starting grid. As Ray had mentioned, for the 21st time, Jack Sprague is on the top of the charts. Chad Chaffin with his best start at Martinsville, as does Rick Crawford with his best start. Carl Edwards changed the motor. Now, that's probably not going to be a big factor for him. He'll go to the back of the field, but he's done it three other times, and he's won every time he's changed an engine. Wow. You can see here Shane Mill, Mike Skinner, these guys make up row four. Bill Lester is a cat that uh, has wound up in the Toyota camp, and he continues to impress. Bill always qualifying well to Bill Lester. 
team ultra back in row seven. Ted Musgrave on the inside, Andy Houston on the outside, and back on the outside of row number nine, Mark McFarland, the Dodge Weekly Racing Series national champion last year in Jim Harris' Dodge. Look rows 10 through 12. Daryl Waltrip will start on the inside of row 11. 11 time cup winner here. Ken Schrader has 44 starts. Uh, a lot of those in cup, but he's also got a, a couple in the truck, so this is his 45th start. Third place in the points, David Rudeman starts on the inside of row number 13. You can see Hank Parker Jr., that terrible crash he experienced in Atlanta a month ago. The time off has been good for him. He's been able to re recuperate, and he's in that Toyota truck. Five-time series winner Terry Cook starts on the inside of row 16 in the Power Stroke Diesel Ford. And Gina Gordon, back from that vicious crash that Hank Parker was in, you mentioned Michael, starts the leader of the provisionals on the inside of row 17. Take a look at the trucks that missed the field. 46 attempted to make the 36 truck field. Kelly Sutton, Jeffrey Bodine, Craig Wood, Ricky Gonzalez rounding out that list. Take a look at the Craftsman track description, and people have called it a paper clip. Well, what you have is two really long straightaways and tight turns. What it, what it does, it puts a premium on the brakes and on the gearing. You have to really take care of your truck. It's only 250 laps, but you can burn one up in a hurry, charging down into the corner. You heard Jack Sprague saying he's a guy that wants to get deep in the corner. That hurts you in the race here, not only because of the brakes, but it also heats up your tires, Bill. It's hard to operate with that type of MO. As you mentioned, Michael, 250 laps, almost $450,000 purse. Pit window for fuel, 130 to 150 laps, but we see a lot of caution flags here at Martinsville, so I think you'll see drivers pitting well before that. Let's take a look at who we're going to be riding along with. The Federated Auto Parts 52 of Ken Schrader will carry one of our cameras, so we'll be able to have a little experience around at Martinsville. Somebody else with a little experience around this track, Daryl Waltrip, piloting the Toyota number 11. I don't know how old he is, but he acts like he's about 16 years old when he's, in, when he's at a race track getting to drive that truck. I know it's a lot of fun. You can see Andy Houston here uh, on, on board camera as well. He'll be starting in the 14th position. A bunch of these guys have got a lot of traffic to get through, but nobody more than Carl Edwards. He's going to drop to the back of the field. Dennis Setzer usually qualifies right up front and runs real well here, but uh, he's mired back in the 10th spot to start. So it'll be interesting to see these guys working their way through the field. Jack Sprague will sit on the pole, has an opportunity to win $6,000 in this race, and the Craftsman wins the pole. Let's talk to Daryl Waltrip, though. We've got a mic with him. Yeah, it's Mike. Daryl up in the booth. What do you think? You ready to roll, brother? Well, let's don't wait all day. That 16 truck's going to be coming. Roger. DW, it's Mike up in the speed booth. Can you read me, brother? Switch is up. Roger. All switches up. Ready to rock and roll. It sounds like there's a little bit of team communication going on there. Let's listen up as they get Bring back. You got the green, bud. You got the green. They're coming to the green. Four. That's why there's all this uh, sudden up the tempo. The truck is off. Jack Sprague, Chad Chapman come out of turn number four for the green flag to get underway with the Kroger's 250. down on the racetrack, Michael. You had two practice sessions for the Nextel Cup car this morning. A lot of laps put down, so these guys are seeing more rubber than they had than they saw yesterday in happy hour. Oh, Bill problems Lester. early on. Bill Lester getting spun around in the 22 and turns three and four, and that creates a bottleneck as they all try to get around the 22 Toyota of Bill Lester. He keeps it moving. The caution flag flies on lap number one. Now, all down. Take it easy. We'll be all right. And so caution number one comes out on lap number one. We'll be back with more Green Flag Racing. The Truck Series on speed. We talked about bumping and banging as a part of the Truck Series. Well, it's already started on lap number one. Let's take a look. Well, this is kind of rude here. Andy just closes in on the 22 and spins them out. Um, first lap of the race, I know Bill was hoping for a little bit more courtesy than that. Then the look at the truck piling in there, trying to figure out which way to go. You can see DW slipping through here. See if we can talk to Daryl. Hey, Daryl, uh, that's a close call. What happened? How'd you get by that? I don't know. All I know is we go down the back straightaway, and the next thing you know, we're three wide with a wreck right in front of us. So uh, a little early to be driving three wide, but I guess that's part of it. Uh, I wouldn't have done it that way, but we'll see how it works out. 
I think if you'd have seen the replay, you would have been really surprised to see how that all took place. But uh, your skills are still in place. I noticed you snaked your way right through that crash. Was Larry Mike on the radio telling you what to do? Uh, I really was worried about the start, and now I know why. <laughs> All right, brother, one to go. Get them belts tight. Let me tell that stuff Larry does. Be ready. You got Park in front of you. Teammate behind you. I know he'll cut you some slack, so bring her down here and let's get some truck. We've got to move up here today. Ready? Be ready? Be ready? Larry Be Mack. Ready? Green flag, green Talking flag. Darrell Waltrip. Green flag flies again for Jack Sprague as he leads the 36 trucks to the start-finish line. Schrader. We saw the Federated 52 moving to the outside early. And in talking to DW before the race, he said early on he needs to get in front of about 10 trucks. Well, you can't take a chance on going a lap down, Rick. That happens so fast here. You get a truck like Jack Sprague, if he's got his truck the way he wants it to start this race, he has no traffic. He can run a half second, maybe even sometimes a second faster than the guys back there in traffic. So Darrell has to be conscious that he could go a lap down early if he isn't careful. We see Travis Popple there. He was trying to work to the outside of the track, too. Not a whole lot of action going on right now on the outside. It looks like pretty much around the bottom. But from what we saw in practice this morning, that outside will open up. We'll see two lanes of racing here at Martinsville. Bobby Hamilton moves up into fourth in front of Travis Popple with a little pit strategy. Ray Dunlap. Well, Rick, I think we're going to keep track today of how many drivers get a free pass. Normally, we have only about eight cautions here at Martinsville, but I wouldn't be surprised today if it's more like 12 or 13, and that could mean lots of guys getting a free pass back onto the lead lap. So that means I'm just wondering how late will anybody pit in today's race. I think the competition has gotten so good in this series, I'd be surprised to see anybody pit much later than lap 160 or 170, because I don't think there's enough time to get back to the front. I think the key today is going to be a lot of trucks on the lead lap. These guys that are mired back in traffic, Rick, are catching a break. Jack Craig is not able to pull away from the leaders. He's kind of holding up the first few trucks. So even though it's just that subtle, that's allowing the guys back in the field to breathe a little bit easier. A guy like Dennis Setzer isn't just out there streaking away from everybody in danger of putting a lot of trucks to lap down. Great battle for nine, Danny Petrie and David Starr. Petrie in the 33, David Starr in the Spears Manufacturing 75 on the inside. He tries to make the pass going down the back stretch. Great move by David Starr to lock up the left front brake trying to get down the corner. Great move by him to work underneath Andy coming off turn two. Now he's got side by side with him. He's on the, in the preferred line on the bottom of the racetrack. Let's see if he can get by Andy. Make sure Andy doesn't crowd him a little bit too much. There's Dennis Setzer right there. We're taking a look back from Dennis Setzer's onboard camera. And he's hanging in there on the outside pretty well. Yeah, there's definitely multi groups here at Martinsville, but uh, it seems like the upper one comes in best still after your truck or, or your vehicle has a few laps on it. And, uh, Get, get those Goodyear tires worn down a little bit, and there's some room to race on the outside. You can see Andy here holding it on. And it looked like a little bit of smoke coming out of the 88. That's right, Tracy Hines having some problems in the Menards 88. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot of smoke yeah, there. He's going to get black, black, and that's a tremendous amount of smoke. It's obviously not tire smoke, so he either has a roof oil line or something like that going on. And the problem with that is if he's dropping oil on the track, that can bring out a caution. It doesn't look like he is. I watched the trucks that were following him, and they didn't seem to be sliding around these, so maybe you can stay green here. You can see a great battle shaping up for the lead here. Chad yeah, Chapman trying to go to the outside. It was allowing Rick Crawford to get to the inside. He was on the inside of him a couple corners ago, but uh, he said, hey, Jack Sprague's standing on the bottom of the racetrack. If I'm going to pass him, I'm going to have to do it on the outside. You had mentioned the preferred line being down on the bottom, but the problem also is that when they're coming off of those corners, the guy on the inside is not able to get into it as fast because he might slide up into the guy on the outside. He cannot use the entire racetrack to come on out to the wall, so he has to kind of pinch it a little bit, and that sometimes keeps him from using as much throttle as he would like to. Great battle for sixth and seventh. Mike Skinner on the outside, Shane Meal on the inside. You can see Shane. He's able to hug that curve, go right around the bottom of the track, and catch a, catch a little bit of an edge over Skinner, but then that outside lane provides so much momentum, it's hard to complete the pass. But Shane looks like he's really got that truck working well down on the bottom, and I can promise you, oh, he don't want to do that too often. It's best to keep barely squeeze the line. But I was going to say, I can promise you, he's got plenty of power. That's a DEI engine under the hood of that number 15, and he's just, just driving away from them now. I'll tell you, that's a driver and team that has really been impressive this year. They had a great run going at Daytona, got split through the grass there by uh, pushed by another truck, had a good top 10 run in Atlanta. Brand new truck for Billy Ballou's team here. 
and uh, Shane doing a great job. Had a good qualifying run and uh, is running well. That's been a lot of fun to watch that team mature like it has. Bill, they've been around for a while and now they've kind of hit their own and they're becoming becoming very competitive. Jack Sprague making his way around lap traffic now. Sprague, Chaffin, Crawford, Hamilton, and Quaffle are your top five. Welcome back to Martinsville Speedway. Ken Weaver gets spun around in the 08 in turn two. And that brings up caution number two. Coming out on lap 25. I'm not sure Ken Weaver didn't have a tire going down. He came off of turn four, got really sideways, and went down in turn one and two and turned the thing around. So he, uh, he obviously had a serious handling problem, if not a flat tire. A lot of guys were happy to see that caution, huh, Phil? Yeah, Carl Edwards, one of them, we looked at him during the break. He was over 16 and a half seconds behind. So he was only four and a half seconds away from being lapped. You mentioned what, when the leader has clean racetrack, what a pace he can make. And people like Carl Edwards mired back in traffic with nowhere to go. Wendy? Well, we talked to uh, Kevin Starlin, his crew chief, before uh, the race for Carl, Ed Carl Edwards, and uh, they said um, with that engine change, they're going to be starting in the back, but they weren't too worried about it. He said they might come in and pit early in the race just to make some adjustments if they feel they need to because they're not so worried about it in the beginning of the race. And also they've just, say just been saying that the truck has been tight, tight for Carl Edwards. A lot of times when you get put behind the eight ball like that, Bill, you want to mix things up. You know, Carl Edwards and his team talked about maybe bringing it to pit road and working on it because they want to just switch things around a little bit, put them on a different pit strategy. Maybe say they pit now and take some tires or put some fuel or make an adjustment. In 20 laps or so, another caution, everybody else pits, he takes advantage of that and moves up. So uh, that's a smart move, but I guarantee you that they might be playing poker face down there because they got to be worried. They could not get where they were going. A lot of damage on the left front corner. He's obviously made some contact with somebody, but it doesn't look like it critical thing is at the bottom the brake ducts right at the bottom that is the critical part of the front end the air in inlet for the radiator and the brake ducts you gotta have brakes at this racetrack so you do not want to knock those brake ducts off it'd be impossible to think you could start last and not have something torn up in the first 20 or 30 laps it's just that tight and that uh, challenging to, to negotiate this place the 08 of Ken Weaver bringing out our caution number two let's take a look at how this happened There's our second and third place trucks, the 18 and the 14. See, top of your screen, all by himself, just got a little bit loose right before the center of the corner. So uh, around he went. We've got some great trucks right now on pit road. Carl Edwards did, as, as Wendy mentioned, Cowboy brought him in the pits. They're making some adjustments, topping it off with fuel. There's Carl right there. He brought his Ford to pit road, and uh, Rudiman was in as well. As you can see, the NTN truck there following him out. So these guys just knew that... Uh, the direction they were headed wasn't going to get them where they wanted to be, so they needed to work on those trucks. It looked like they added at least two or three rounds of wedge in, the, in that truck. We're only 28 laps in. I love this about the fact that this race is 250 laps now. It seemed like when it was 200, you know, you just were really getting to where things were beginning to get interesting. It'd be over. There's plenty of racing here today, folks. And Ray had mentioned earlier about pit strategy and possibly pitting around lap 160 this being a 250 lap race halfway is 125 so potentially these guys could have pitted one time on this race but but the, the new Goodyear tire the new generation tire that everybody's made such a big deal out of it is really sticky for 10 or 15 laps and then you have to manage your uh, your traction the thing just won't bite like it did at first and that's exactly how NASCAR asked Goodyear to design the tire and they were smart enough to to give them just what they wanted and I think it, it will improve racing at a place like Martinsville because you're not going to be able just to stay out there forever and ever. You're going to have to come to pit road. They think they can make it to 160 and then pit, but that's, that's just, I think that's still a question. Well, tomorrow the world's best drivers return to Fox for NASCAR and XL Cup racing in the Advanced Auto Parts 500. Defending champion Jeff Gordon looks to defend his title at one of NASCAR's toughest tracks. 17 weeks of high-speed thrills and excitement will continue on Fox. There's Jeff Gordon, Gordon's DuPont Chevrolet. Now, you were out there in happy hour. Did you think you looked pretty good? Yeah, I ran behind him a little bit. His car is really good, obviously. He got the pole, the third pole in a row he's had here in three out of the last four. So, obviously, that team has done a nice job. Ray, what's going on down there in the pit? A lot of work, I see. Well, yeah, Michael, and I, you know, you're talking about when would you like to pit. I did a lot of pooling earlier this morning to find out what everybody would like. The perfect pit strategy here at Martinsville today would be to come in for your first time at lap 75 and get four tires, then come in about 155 to 165. That would be what all the crew chiefs would love to see happen. But here's the thing. Keep your eye on the leader today. Sometimes here at 
Martinsville, being the leader is not always the greatest position. A couple times I've seen it happen where the leader pitted and nobody else did. Or if he decided not to pit, everybody else did. So we'll watch that as the day unfolds. But 75 and 160 are the perfect marks. Yeah, and you know, Ray, a lot of people talk of a one-stop bed. Yeah, I think it's going to take two stops. So we'll see how that plays out. Be ready. Be ready. Green flag. You notice Rick Crawford took over second place from Chad Chef, and that happened right after the caution was coming out for that spin by Ken Weaver. Jack Sprague continues to lead. This actually is the first race Jack Sprague has ever led at Martinsville in the eight races he's run here. That's an amazing statistic, the fact that Jack Sprague, three-time champion, 23 wins in his career, 10 of them on a short track, and he's never led a lap at Martinsville. Always a mainstay at the front. That's surprising to hear. And Michael, we can we talked about how Rick Crawford was able to move in front of Chad Chapman almost when the caution came out. You're somewhat familiar with being able to advance just before a caution. Well, we advanced pretty well at Nashville when they all wiped out. I was watching the reaction from the NASCAR booth, which is just adjacent to the speed panel booth here, to see what they saw when the caution came out. I saw guys really rooting and gouging after the caution had fallen, and I was wanted wondering to see how NASCAR sorted all that out. They allowed Rick to complete the pass. Wendy, are you down there in Rick's pit? I sure am, and I, I was talking to their team, and they said before that caution, Rick Crawford came over the radio and said he didn't want to force the issues on the 18th, and there's a spin on the track. Bill Lester. Bill Lester around again? No, Bill didn't spin. The 31 spun. He and the 17 got together and spun, and Bill was just kind of waiting for him to get out of the way. That was one of those cases where I think the flagman was a little bit quick with his with his flag. You'd like to see him when they just have an innocent spin like that, maybe give him a chance to get it sorted out and right it before we go under caution again, but it uh, didn't happen. Dennis James, the flagman, a little rambunctious maybe, but caution number three comes out on lap 34. The person that brought out our third caution on lap 34. As they come out of turn number four, Jack Sprague continues to lead the field to the green flag. We're back to racing. Bobby Hamilton taking a peek to the outside of his teammate, Chad Chapman. Oh, and Chad left the room up there for him, too, Phil. Saw him looking up there and decided to give him a little bit of room. Boy, it seems like that is the best time to try to pass him on the outside, right after restart. Your tires are cooled off a little bit. Theirs are cooled off a little bit. You get a lot of grip up there, and it looks like he might make that pass work. Looks like Chad almost backed off to let him by. Would you back off your boss? Well, you're racing. This is different. Uh, yeah, but it's early, too, Rick. You know, you don't want to mess anything up right now. You see a guy with a better truck, especially if it's your owner, you're going to cut him a break. You mentioned tires. We talked a lot about tire pressure starting like 8 pounds of tire pressure to start this race. Goodyear recommends 25 pounds of air pressure on the right side, 50 pounds on the left side. Everybody always lets the air out of these tires because they build up so much air. We've heard as low as 7 to 8 pounds on the left side and maybe down as low as, you know, 17 or 18 pounds on the right side. That's extremely low air pressure. So it takes these trucks a little bit of time to get that air pressure built back up into normal operating pressure. Side by side oh. racing for 10. And Rick Crawford almost got by Jack Sprague for the lead. Into the side spy racing in the front. <laughs> and then Rick Crawford backs up and Bobby Hamilton moves up there. Bobby's using that high line just like we saw him at Atlanta. He's making it work here at Martinsville. Great battles all over the track. Back for 10th with Ted Musgrave and Matt Crafton. And up at the front, Bobby Hamilton moving through the field. Sorry I jumped in on you there, Rick, but uh, that 14 truck just drove right beside of Jack. They had a little bit of argument for space over there off turn two. It's Michael, let's, let's, let's take a look, look at that right here. Coming off turn number two, look, Rick's going to get down on the inside. Going to drive up beside him in the center. Ah, didn't get very far, but made some contact. Jack was diamonding the racetrack a little bit. That means slide up in the middle a little bit and then try to drive it off a little bit straighter. And that allowed Rick to stick his nose up in there, and then Jack came back down. Wendy? Well, I talked to Rick Crawford when we got here this weekend, and he said the best medicine for me was to get back in this truck. Remember, he had that injury on that left foot from the Atlanta accident? Actually, today he has uh, two different size shoes on his feet. He normally wears a size 12. On his left foot, he's wearing a size 14 to allow for a plastic insert on that foot. Another 
thing that we have to point it out, I think, is Gene Mead as Rick Crawford's crew chief. It just seems like there's a comfort level there that those two guys are really hitting on all cylinders right now. Rick told me in Atlanta, said, hey, we are on the same page. Gene and I worked together for three or four years, and, and so obviously I know Gene, and Rick Crawford said, hey, he is the right man for this operation. You know, Ray Stonkas, Rick's longtime crew chief, was not able to travel as much and fly because of health problems. Gene Mead stepped right in there. They built some new trucks. This is a brand new truck, the lightest truck they've ever built. Went to Greenville to test it. It had a terrific test. Rick said, we're on the money. I like the way Rick's truck looks, don't you, Phil? He's able to put that thing right down on the bottom of the racetrack. I know he lost his spot trying to get under the leader there, but watch him there. He's able to point that truck right at the bottom, and it's just working really well down there. That's how you win at Martinsville. You get your stuff down on the bottom like Rick's got it. You're in good shape. You have three great veterans up front right now, and you just saw Bobby Hamilton inch back when he saw that he was going to be on the outside of Rick Crawford. He knows the preferred line is on the inside. He just said, you know what, Rick, you go ahead. It's early in this race. That's like we talked on the restart there with Chad Chapman giving Bobby the hole. Whether it's your team owner or not, this early in the race, it's really good to be smart. You know, you want to take care of your stuff and just check out who's got a better truck. Maybe he passes you and you learn something off his line. You can go to work and figure out what he's doing and make your truck better. Wendy? Ted Musgrave this morning said he wasn't worried about his starting spot. He said, we have a consistent truck. Anything can happen in 250 laps. We have that long to figure it out. He said, um, right now he's been quiet on the radio, but he said he's just saving his equipment at this point. We talk about Ted Musgrave. Gene Nee, crew chief for Rick Crawford, with Ted Musgrave's crew chief for the last two years. They won six races together, two top three finishing points, and uh, does a great job, did a great job for Ultra, and is doing a great job over at Circle Bar Racing. Great race for the lead. That's Jack Sprague in the 16 out in front of Rick Crawford in the 14. Good battle going on here. And the last time they went through one and two, Rick Crawford got on the inside of Jack Sprague, bumped him a little bit, got him sideways, and now he's racing for the lead again. I can't tell you how impressive this is, the way Crawford's making this pass. He's able to pinch the truck down on the bottom of the racetrack, but yet still have enough forward bike to drive up beside the leader. Not lose any momentum whatsoever. Jack Sprague obviously knows right now that Rick Crawford's there. And again, Jack knows it's early in the race. He didn't expect Rick Crawford to stick his nose in there when they made contact earlier on, but he knows Rick Crawford's coming. There he is right there side by side. Jack's hanging in there pretty well on the outside of the racetrack, but I think Rick will get him before it's all said and done. But the longer he stays underneath Jack like that, Phil, it gets more and more difficult to pinch that truck down and keep those tires from heating up. So he'll have to figure out how long he wants to stay inside of Jack. But look at there, really impressive the way he's able to drive off the corner. And Michael, you use the word cats a lot. Bobby Hamilton's looking like a cat just waiting to chomp on his prey here, sitting back there watching these two guys race in front of him. We look, saw him hang look. out at Atlanta on top of the racetrack and just destroy the field there through the middle stages. So he's observing, trying to figure out which way he wants to head. Got Tina Gordon, the lap truck, the 13 truck on the inside. It's going to force Rick Crawford to back off, follow Jack. Well, maybe. Jack actually got a little bit wide right there. Rick able to take advantage. Oh, and big Bobby time sideways. Hamilton makes the pass on Jack Sprague. Jack got big time sideways off turn number four. They got a little bit out of the road. Just be nice and smooth. Ray, what's going on with Rick Crawford? Well, hey, Rick, you know, we said at the top of the show that Sprague had run all those races here and never led. Crawford hasn't been out front much either. He's run eight times here at Martinsville and only led 20 laps. But I think you guys are dialed into what's great about his truck is he's so good on the bottom coming off turn four. He said he's a little bit tight on the exit of two, but it feels great coming off four. Crawford gets out front. Remember, he has had four consecutive top ten finishes here at Martinsville. Let's take a look at that pass for the lead, how Crawford got in front. He backed off with a lap truck here. Jack went in on the outside of Tina, slid up a little bit wide, got off the concrete into the asphalt, could not get the grip, and Rick took advantage and slipped through the middle. Yeah, you had to like Rick saying, this is my opportunity. I want to capitalize on it right here. Bobby Hamilton did the same thing, followed right behind Rick, and so Bobby now sits in second. Jack Sprague has dropped back to third. Great side-by-side -side racing, bumping and banging, short track style at Martinsville Speedway. We'll be back with more green flag racing. We'll live on speed, we're riding along with Federated Auto Parts number 52 of Ken Schrader, looking back at Steve Park in the 62, and just behind them. Now we've got a side-by-side -side pedal for the lead. Bobby Hampton making the pass on the outside. 
Bobby knows how to take advantage of the racetrack. Nobody else runs in, doesn't he? No, we, we sat there. We said, well, Bobby's just riding right now. It looks like he's in a comfortable spot. He can see the leader. He's a truck length in front of him. So he's just going to ride there right now. Then, bam, all of a sudden he makes a pass for the lead. This track just looks like it's really hooking up, exiting the corner. Let's see if we can see what happened here when he gets the lead. He's got a great run through the center of the corner. Pulled up on the outside of Rick. There's no easy down the outside there. Gives him some room, and Bobby just drives down the corner, and the thing sticks. Bobby Hamilton has said that Daytona and Atlanta were probably the best handling trucks he's had, and he continues that here at Martinsville. And that's a truck of his own design, essentially. This is a brand new truck. It has, it's built from the ground up in the shop. The only thing they don't do is build the engines. Wendy, what's going on down there? Well, we were listening to Gene Mead on the radio, and he's actually coaching Rick Crawford around this track. You saw Bobby Hamilton just got by him. Gene Mead said, I hate to tell you this, but you're getting into the corner a little too hard. You need to start saving your tires. Don't let them all go now. We have a long race to run. Ted Musgrave and Travis Quaffle battling for eighth. Musgrave in the home part number one. Travis Quaffle in the line X24. Now we talked about Travis Quaffle's struggles here in 2003, and uh, he's not where he wants to be with that truck today. A truck we saw earlier, hit earlier, Phil, and made some serious adjustments was the 99 of Carl Edwards, and that team did a great job, Cowboys guys did, to make the adjustments that it's taken to get Carl on up through the field. Rudeman pit with him. Rudeman's running 31st, a lap down. Carl's all the way up to 17th and uh, has a very strong truck after those adjustments. Just actually got by Mark McFarlane for the 16th position. And remember, he didn't change tires. He just adjusted on that truck. You you just mentioned Rudiman a yeah. lap down. Yeah. Rudiman's fourth in points right now in the Craftsman Truck Series, and he's already been lapped. Tells you about the intense competition. When you have a long green flag run, you really get to see who's got their truck set up uh, for the longer haul. And, and David's been off since the start of the race, for sure. And uh, Bobby's looks like he his strong suit to be the long run, and it's getting to show, show that way. We just saw a bunch of them laughing. Terry Cook, another great truck, a multi-winner on the short tracks in the Craftsman Truck Series. He also goes a lap down. He's back in the 29th position. 28 trucks still on the lead lap. Kevin Love, the furthest back. And the other one just in front of Kevin Love in 27, who actually moved up to 26, is Brent Keselowski. So Kevin Love and Brent Keselowski running their first ever truck race today. Yeah, Brent Keselowski from Michigan. K Automotive has been around since the truck series started. That's Bob and Kate, son, youngest son. Brad doing a great job. Had a test at Texas last week, a Ford test. Did a terrific job down there and doing a great job. Got in the, got in the field on time, doing a great job, staying out of trouble, still on the lead lap. Would love to get a caution flag to get caught back up, but really just wants to run 250 laps or as many as he can. When the checker flag falls, he wants to be on the racetrack. Bobby Hamilton out in front, led nine of the 75 laps so far. We had three different leaders of this race, and as they come to the line, let's look at the speeds. I believe Dennis Setzer has been really doing well, saving his tires and running real, very fast. Remember, Dennis Setzer started back in the 10th position. The admittedly short track ace, Barnesville ace, the only two-time winner here at this racetrack, already up into the third position. Has passed recently Jack Sprague to get to the third position. He's about two and a half seconds behind right now. There's a great race. That's the 33 of Andy Petrie, the sixth of Mac Crafton. There's the, well, there's too many to mention. They're all, they're all running a pack. <laughs> They're racing for the seventh spot. There's about, look at all of them lined up there. You can see Quapple diving to the inside of the Dickey Dodge. Chad Chapman, David Starr doing a nice job today in that spear Chevy. A little sideways off of two there. Currently, we're riding on board the 46 of Dennis Setzer. We call him Short Track Ace. Ray, what have you got? Well, Rick, I just thought it was a little bit odd that they did not show up this weekend with their favorite old chassis called Stan. But the thing is, with building all these brand new trucks this year, they found one they liked a lot better. This one is called Token, and earlier on the radio, Dennis Setzer said he was very, very tight, and he was not happy with this set of tires. His crew chief, Danny Gill, said, don't worry, set three is what we'll put on next, and they'll be much looser. We have a big spin right now on the racetrack, and I believe this will set up our first round of pit stops. Big spin, Ray mentioned. And a big problem for the 18 Dickies Dodge of Chad Chaffin. He got some serious body damage as he was caught up in that accident. Just happened to be looking right at that one, Rick. Looked like Andy Petrie got into turn three a little deeper than he meant to. 
And uh, I think he clobbered Travis Foppel and then sent Travis into the 18, but I'm not sure. There was a chain reaction wreck, I will tell you that. There's Rob, Robert Huff, who's called a little bit of damage. There's Chad Chaffin, Jimmy Dodge, number 18, our outside pole sitter. Chad Chaffin got spun around and probably wouldn't have had much damage, but had to back up to get the truck pointing in the right direction. And when he backed up, he backed right into traffic. The right rear quarter panel bent in very hard. Let's take a look at what happened. Here they are entering turn number three. That's Andy Feetry runs in the back of the 75 of David Starr. That turn knocks him into the 18 of Chad Sheffa. Now everyone's just trying to find a way out. Oh, and he it's, didn't He didn't keep his brake clock, like Rick says, trying to get the thing in a position so he wouldn't lose the lap to get on his way back right in front of the 22, I think. I think it was the Robert Huff and maybe the 12 truck. We saw the damage there. Well, another bad break for Robert Huff, and he's had nothing but breath. Another shot up it there. You see Andy driving the corner, gets into the 75. Watch now, if he just held his brakes right here, he wouldn't back down and oh, that is 12, Robert Huff. 12. But Andy just, uh, Andy overshot that turn and, and ran into the 75. Steve Park also involved in that, trying to come to a stop, but got in behind the 18 of Chad Chef. Here comes all the leaders down pit road. Bobby Hamilton leading the field down pit road right now as they We'll get a big stop taking place. Dennis Setzer goes in for the first one. He has the first pit stall. He's going to have four tires. He's going to take a little bit of wedge out of the left rear. We, we heard him talk about being light, uh, a little bit tight. He's going to take some le wedge out of the left rear. Ray Dunlap. Bobby Wait. Hamilton is coming in here in the square D Dodge, guys, and he said that he is just a little bit tight off. They're going to take some air off of the uh, front of the grill here as they are going to do four tires for Hamilton. He has said not much on the radio throughout the course of the day. His crew chief, Danny Rollins, changes the front tires. Dale Newcomb is on the rears. Now let's go to Wendy. Well, the 14 truck of Rick Crawford has just pulled out. He got four fresh tires, but no changes on the 14 truck. Gene Need, crew chief, came over the radio and said, are you having fun yet? And Rick Crawford said, yeah, when I was in the lead. And he said, I think he just won the race off pit road. And he said, well, you said those tires will get you there in the end. Rick Crawford winning the race off pit road. Right behind him, the 16 of Jack Sprague. All of the trucks came in for pits. And Ray, what's going on? Well, Rick, big track bar adjustment for Sprague. He was telling me that he wanted to do an air pressure adjustment too, but they decided track bar was in definitely what he needed because the truck was a, a good bit tight for him coming off the corner. So they made that adjustment. And Hamilton did get blocked in just a little bit here in the pits. Right in front of him was the number eight who did not get going quickly as they would like to. So Hamilton lost a spot or two there on the way out of the pits. in the number 29, the KF Automotive 29. I'm not sure what he was thinking. He was rifling down pit road, and pit road speed is 35 miles an hour, and he was well beyond that, and actually okay, ran on, into the wall. Well, you know, you take a look at the damage on the way. It wouldn't turn, I wish. I couldn't get the wheel to turn. Talk about leaving a pitchy at the wall? That's his father, Bob Kevzalowski, asked him, what, what do you mean you hit the wall? But he, as you mentioned, Rick, he was going about 70 miles an hour when he got down to, to exit the pit road, and it follows the contour of the racetrack. So you can see that he's got, there's black marks on the in, outside pit wall where he, uh, where he made some pretty hard contact on pit road. Well, I'm sure he was just trying to avoid going a lap down. It's okay to speed a little bit when you're leaving the pit. Here's why we're under caution number four. Trucks getting spun around in turn number four. We'll be back with Green Flag Racing as Rick Crawford leads the field. We come back. Kroger 250, the race number three for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. We're under caution number four. Problem in turn number four, but we'd like to talk to a guy who wasn't involved in that accident, in Trader. Kenny, it's Michael up in the speed booth. Raise your hand if you can hear me. How's your day going? It looks like you got a really competitive truck. It's pretty good, Michael, but I can't I can't get nowhere. We started back 24th and got a little bit far up on the start and then missed a couple little accidents and had some trouble in the pits. 
we're just kind of maintaining so far, so need some long runs. Uh, did you see the accident, and were you uh, were you able to get out of them without any damage? Yeah, I saw trucks uh, facing the wrong direction. One of them was Petrie. Do you believe that? I, I couldn't have surprised me. But uh, we, we got through without any damage. Well, that's good. I'm going to give you another news flash here that won't surprise you. It, it, it could have been his fault, too. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that. You know, I might have to work for him again someday. He's my buddy. But uh, he just spins out a lot, you know? <laughs> 10-4. Well, you hang in there. Keep that truck pointed in the right direction. That's that's all you can be responsible for. Those that were involved. I'm, I'm working on it, buddy. That fourth crash, Musgrave, Montgomery, Huffman, Chaffin, Petrie, Park, and Star. Up into ninth position. Jeff, what's going on over there? Right now, everything's going pretty good with this Toyota pickup truck. Today, uh, guys made a great stop here. Bill Davis' guys went to the Axel Cup crew. He's working with us part today. Brought us down the road. He got us out in a nice place. And made a little bit of adjustment to the DW's truck. It was a little bit tight. Getting off the center off. Darrell couldn't get back to throttle like he needed to. So we went down one round on the right rear. Took a little air fresh out of the right front tire. See how this year kind of plays out. We're getting ready to go back green. We hope we're going to keep this truck up front. You need, you need to get on him, Jeff, and tell him he's got some good trucks around him. He's got to step up the pace here, challenge that thing a little bit on this restart and hold his position. He's, he's got to get up on the wheel right now, Mike. Uh, all these dogs right now in front of him and around him are hungry. He's going to have to go. Be ready. Larry McReynolds letting him know. Green flag. Green flag. Green, green flag flies as Rick Crawford won the race off pit road, leading the field through one and two. And more importantly, won the race down in turn number one. He was able to drive in front of Terry Cook, the lap truck, and had a, have a clean shot down to the bottom of the racetrack. Take a look at the biggest movers. Chase Montgomery moving 18 spots, Kraft in 13 spots. DW, 12 spots he's moved. You have to take into consideration the 99 of Carl Edwards. He started last. <laughs> And uh, he's driven his way all the way up to eighth. And that truck, he's driving on the inside of Shane Neal there. That truck just seems, seems to get better and better as he's racing out up to seven. Andy Houston also starting in the back because of the motor change up into 13th position. Bobby Hamilton was the big loser on that round of pit stops. He came out in fourth spot. Fourth or fifth, in fact. Cam. Whoa, look at how close they are racing there. Uh, Shane there. Neal just in front of him in the 15th. This is what we were talking about with Hammond there. When the, on these restarts, you've got to be really aggressive. They're going to try to get around the outside of you. They're going to try to get up underneath you. Ray, what's going on? Hey, Michael, Shane Meal also lost a few spots on the pit road, but not because his crew made a mistake. It was because a tire rolled into their pit area from the number eight crew, and it tripped their rear tire changer, so they lost about three seconds, and they figure at least three spots on the racetrack. Shane said, what in the world happened there? But looks like we're going to have a big pass for the lead. Jack Sprague gets by Rick Crawford on the outside as they go across the start finish line. After, look at Mike Skinner. Mike Skinner right in the mix of this now in that Toyota 42. I tell you, Michael, I'm liking the outside of the racetrack right now. These guys are really making some great moves on the outside. Bobby Hamilton almost into the back of Mike Skinner, and that's the way Atlanta ended. That is good racing. Like you said, Phil, they're able to take advantage of two grooves on this track. Bragg has made an adjustment in his truck. I think that's obvious. And when he was in the front earlier, he could just stay just ahead of the other guys. Now look at him. He's opened his lead up. Rick Crawford was running on the low side of the track earlier. He was very impressive in passing. And now he's trying to get down on the inside of Bobby Hamilton again to get that position back. You know, I noticed before that accident, I, we were talking a little bit about Dennis Tessa moving up into the third position. I was watching his line on the racetrack, and he was running the top of the racetrack, the second group. He had a clean racetrack in front of him, but he was running on the top of the racetrack, so a lot of these drivers really like the top of the racetrack. And at Martinsville, there's a lot of close calls, and DW just had a close call. Let's take a look. You can see there, he's got his right front tire, wrinkle, front, front wheel all wrinkled up. Oh, and problems in turn four. Steve That's Park. Steve Park, and it looks like Brad Keselowski in the 29. Caution is out. So caution five comes out before the close call that we were going to see of DW. And so that brings out caution five, Steve Park, Brad Keselowski involved in that mishap. 
They were both fortunate enough to stay on the lead lap without any damage. Oh, Bill Lester's got some serious damage to the front end. So after 102 laps, our fifth caution has come out in Martinsville. A lot more bumping and banging than these drivers want. Be live on speed. We're under caution number five as Steve Park and Brad Keselowski had some problems on turn 102. And not turn 102, lap 102. <laughs> we are going to take a peek at Daryl Waltrip having a little bit of a close call earlier. Let's take a look at this. He squeezes up underneath 31, and his wheel catches contact with, with 31's wheel, RM India, and it's about to put Daryl out. Now, we've got a shot from the valence of the 11. This is, this is a tire shot. Listen to him work the throttle when he gets into 31 here. Whoa. I watched Andy Houston. Right by. Captain. Does that tell you how intense and close things are at Martinsville? One little slip, and somebody's going to shoot right by you. He took 11th position away there. Let's find out what's going on with Daryl. Hey, Daryl. What about the action on the back stretch there? You got into the 31 and uh, looked like you had your hands full. Yeah, I, I was uh, I was thinking that was going to happen, and uh, and I was right again. I tried to get the guy, you know, all the room I could, but uh, anyway, it didn't hurt it too bad. I think it might have helped it. We're looking at it. The damage does not seem to be anything that I would worry about if I were you. Do you feel comfortable on these restarts? Is your truck the way you want it to be right now, or are you better in the longer haul? Better over the longer run, and uh, this thing's got some kind of weird transmission in it, and it's killing me on restarts. Roger, you got last fall's winter right behind you, so you're kind of up in the middle of the hornet's nest right now, so get with them. You're doing a great job, brother. Yeah, Roger. Yeah, I think after uh, the tire pressures come up, we're pretty good, but uh, we're a little slow on getting the pressures up. We talked about tire pressures right, earlier, about getting the pressures up, and it takes a little bit while longer. It just depends on if you start lower. Depends on where you're at compared to the others. But uh, he feels like his truck's a little slow on the get-go and cost him a couple of spots on that restart. He fell back to 12. We've got the you ready? green team. Green flag, green flag. About. Jeff Hammond, Larry McReynolds. Possibly two champions battling for the lead as the restart takes place, and Ken Weaver gets spun around coming to the green line. Uh, stay low, stay low. He's not able to get going before the caution comes out, and that's probably uh, Stay low, stay low. They're coming, stay low. Yeah, they felt like they had to throw the caution flag because the leaders were bearing down into turn number three, and with Ken was sitting sideways in the middle of the racetrack. There was no way for that car over here and come to, under uh, the throttle. Uh, whether that truck was going to get going or not. Okay, you know, the old one, it. it out. He had a drink bottle fall in there, he said. said it fell over underneath the bottle. Let like me get to it. Play-by-play -play action here. Ken stopping on the back stretch. I don't think I would get it out there. Now he's a lap down. To get his water bottle out, and he lost yeah, the lap. I got it. Oh, Man, yeah. it stuck my goofing throttle. Coming to the start, you see he gets spun around. He said it stuck his throttle. He just went in the corner way harder than he was going to be able to make because the throttle hung because of his drink bottle. And uh, unfortunately, when stopping on the backstretch to try to get the drink bottle from under the throttle, he lost a lap in the process. So uh, he, was already, he was already down four laps. So obviously the one more is not going to hurt that much. But Ken Weaver bringing out the sixth caution of the day with in a, Martinsville. With a stuck goofing throttle. I like that. <laughs> Field, and that's our next race, May 16th. That takes place at 2 p.m. Craftsman's always on the cutting edge of technology when it comes to tools. Today we want to spotlight another important piece of equipment that Craftsman makes available to all of us in the Craftsman Tool Tech. You know, Craftsman started inventing a box end wrench right after the caveman invented the wheel. But the problem is, in the tight tolerances of a NASCAR vehicle, a lot of times there's just not enough room to get the wrench in where you would like it. But here's what's great. They've now come up with a ratcheting end wrench. You put it on your bolt, and you can loosen that really easily. But what's even better, you go from loosen to tighten with just the flip of a switch. And even better than that, all of these tools are made in America and guaranteed forever. That's 
good set of tools. I, I like the sound of that. Made in America and guaranteed forever. I think that was David Starr's truck that Ray was doing that on. I hope they went back and checked over Fix everything that. he tried to tighten there. Exactly. Ray might be one of the over-the-wall guys for us. David Rudiman in the 17 truck. We've uh, documented his fourth in the points and has been running back in 28th to 30th spot. Looks like Bobby Kennedy and those boys has improved, have improved his truck. He's up to 24th and just got the free pass. He's back on the lead lap. See if he can uh, parlay that into anything. Ray, those guys uh, feeling better about their truck now? Well, a little bit, Michael, but a lot of guys are not feeling very good about the way the free pass is going today. Chad Chaffin ran the stop sign down here because he says the rule says that you only go to the tail end of the longest line, which would make him the beneficiary. The NASCAR has said, no, we've decided we're going to hold you a lap. And also, Terry Cook in the 10 truck thinks that he should be the next guy to get the free pass to come back around and get back on the lead lap. But this time, there's just a lot of discussion down here about what's going on. And also, this just adds a lot of cautions to each of these races. I'm all for getting rid of this rule. I don't know what you guys think up there, but it sure has brought out a lot of discussion here. And I believe there's going to be quite a lot of discussion over in Wayne's World when today's race is over about who should have gotten all these free passes. I believe that when there's confusion, the race should be red flagged. You know, they should, they should just stop the race, especially at a place like Martinsville here, where you so quickly can eat up caution flag laps. The, um, it, it's, just, it's just hard on the competitors and hard on the fans to watch. So when there's a little bit of confusion, and you're going to have confusion, I don't want to get rid of the rule, field. I like it. It makes racing safer. It's good for competition as well. When there's confusion, throw out the red, stop sort it out and then make your decision and go forward. What's that going to hurt? As you mentioned, nobody likes caution flag laps. Drivers, teams, fans, officials. So just stop the thing so you don't keep burning caution lap after caution lap. I like that idea, right? We're going to go with that one. Coming up on the halfway point, as they go by the start-finish line, green flag flies. Jack Sprague, not quite as good a start as Mike Skinner had. Skinner was almost on the back of Sprague. And now Sprague is able to put some distance between himself and second place Mike Skinner. Skinner on the inside of Chad Chapman. Again, Chapman is a lap truck right now. Yeah, I think Chad Chapman's in a situation he doesn't need to force the issue. Right now he is the first truck one lap down. All he needs to do is make sure the guys that are one lap down stay behind him. He doesn't need to really get in the middle of the race for the lead, which right now he is. He's between Jack Sprague, our leader and Mike Skinner, our second place truck. That's gonna really make Mike Skinner mad. If he gets up there, he's faster than Chad Chaffin. He's gonna wanna push, slide him out of the way because he wants to go after the lead. Right now, the only truck the 18's racing is the 84. You see the white truck down on the inside of turn one there? That's Caudill. He's another, he's a lap down as well. So he's the one that the 18 needs to keep his eyeball on. And almost running into the 14, Jamie Caudill in the 84 was able to get out of the way, I guess, of Rick Crawford. More on Rick Crawford, Wendy. Well, you guys were just talking about how most drivers don't like those caution flag laps. Well, the 14 truck loves them right now. Crew Chief Gene Neese came over the radio on that caution, and he said this may have just turned into a one-stop race for us. So save those tires. This may be the last set you get. He said if we get 15 caution laps for the rest of this race, we can make it. I think it's safe to say we'll get 15 caution laps. Yeah, have you seen how some of these cats are driving? Oh, three wide. wide. They come out of turn four. Check it out. All the way down the front straightaway. Somebody's going to have to back off. On the inside, Shane Meal in the middle, and John Wood on the outside. John Wood, last year's winner, native of Stewart, Virginia, just down the road from here. We're on board with Andy Houston as he has a view of the racing going on. Matt, John Wood on his outside. Matt Crafton was on the inside of that three-wide battle, and he said, I'm going to go in down in the corner. You fellas work the rest of it out. He came out with the position. Great side-by-side -side racing continues. Beautiful short track, Martinsville Speedway. Darrell is in a battle here. Right outside. Got Schrader on the outside. Ted up ahead. You see Brandon Witt. He's a rookie that's done a great job coming into this series and figuring out how to get competitive in a hurry, Bill. I think this is the only second short track that he's run in a Crestman Truck Series. He mentioned on the lead lap doing a terrific job back in the top 15. On board with Kenny Schrader looking over at DW, trying to race him on the inside of the track. Darrell looks like he's got his truck working well. You can see him peeking ahead of Stranger there. And Darrell had mentioned that he didn't like restarts. Well, we've had six of oh, those already. Trouble right in front of Darrell. Our Indian. spinning in the 31. Gets it straightened out. 
and no caution comes out as they show the half point. We just go 125 laps. We're at halfway, and that time the caution doesn't come out. Good move by Wayne Auten and his bunch to hold that caution flag to see if that truck can get going on its own. He get New Arm India got turned around, got back going right, right quick. Let's take a closer look at it. Joe cut down in front of Shane Mill a little bit, it looked like, and Shane was in the hole and it turned uh, the 31 around. Nice 360, kept on going straight down the straightaway. Trucks go by without incident. See Joe waving, it looks like he's uh, back up. There's some contact, Chad Chaffin, on the <laughs> brother leader, Jack Sprague. We, I, we said that it would make Rick Crawford mad, or actually it was Mike Skinner at the time, the second place truck mad if, if Chad Chaffin was in, in the way, and it's going to make Jack Sprague mad a little bit that Chad Chaffin's beating on his back bumper. But this, Chad's obviously got a fast truck. He's driven away from second place Mike Skinner and is applying a little bit of pressure there. He's just waiting for the caution flag to fall so he can get the free pass. Yeah, this is the way we started the race. Jack Sprague was on the pole. Uh, Chad Chaffin was outside pole. They were racing for the lead early on. Chad Chaffin had some problems. One guy who's not having problems is Matt Crappy. He's running very well. Let's go down and find out what's going on. Wendy? Well, I talked to uh, crew chief Wally Rogers before the race, and he said, we're not worried about starting in that 23rd spot. You saw that graphic earlier in the race that he was one of the biggest movers, and he sure is. He's moved up to the 8th spot. They haven't made a whole lot of changes uh, on that truck today, and Matt crafton has been pretty quiet. He's just trying to save his equipment while he gets to the front. Remember, Matt Crafton's coming off his best career finish in Atlanta five weeks ago with a good top five run, so he's doing a terrific job at Kevin Harvick's Goodwin Chevrolet. Now, you remember at the beginning of the year, he was my championship pick. I like that combination of Harvick and Crafton and that Chevrolet from Goodrich, and they've proven to be competitive for sure. It'll be interesting to see how they blossom as we go into 2004, if they're able to up it up, up the competition level a little bit, and challenge Bobby Hamilton and those guys that have been up front every week so far this year. You know, we've talked about we had a, we had a race in the middle of February at Daytona. Then we had a race in the middle of March in Atlanta, and now here we are in the middle of April and having a race at Martinsville, and it's going to be another month till our next race in Mansfield, Ohio. Once we start Mansfield, we're going to start racing almost every week, and that's when these guys really have to have their equipment together, and they have to have the program on the money to make a move during the summer. Look here, Bobby Hamilton, he's starting to drop back. We talked about how strong he was early on. He's back into sixth position, and Travis Quapel is battling for that position right behind him. Travis Quapel, we haven't talked a lot about him, but he's the only driver with two top fives this year. And he's also a guy that had top tens about every week last year. He just was a, a machine clicking off those finishes in 2003. This place was his Achilles heel last year. Couldn't get the job done here at Martinsville. Obviously, they've learned a lot from that experience. He's challenging one of the guys that was the stoutest truck on the track earlier, looking for that sixth spot. You see his average finish of third, a second at Daytona, fourth at Atlanta. You know, he has 24 consecutive lead lap finishes currently right now. Ray? Bobby Hamilton out on the racetrack, and a couple people have said, what's going on now that he's dropped back to six? I went up to his crew chief and said, why is Bobby back there? He said, patience, my friend, patience. There is no reason to go up there and beat defenders off this thing. We got a long way to go, so patience is paying off for Hamilton. Wendy? Travis Quapel has been considered the consistency king here at Martinsville. He's completed all 950 laps that he's raced around this track, but he said, I'm sick of being considered consistent. He said, it's good, but I want to win a race, so you should see him moving up quickly. He said, everyone believes we have a good truck. He says, I think we'll, we'll make it through the front towards the end of the race. He predicted a top five finish. And that's a good prediction based on pretty good history. Yeah. If well, you go off of your average. <laughs> a little close to the outside wall there, coming off the corner. Got a little bit loose. Ken Schrader coming in the pits right now, the Federated Auto Parts Chevrolet. Got to be on schedule, Michael. It is, for sure. I saw him rooting around on the 75. It's like they got in some sort of... some sort of battle. Looks like a, is that a spring rubber, Michael? It kind of looks like a spring rubber sitting on the back stretch. Yeah, I don't believe that'll hurt anything. One amazing thing, we're at lap 139, we're over halfway of this race. All 36 trucks are still running in this race right now. 
just tells you how tough trucks are. You know, we've seen these guys beating into each other and running over each other. Great battle for third. Rick Crawford and Dennis Setzer. Crawford getting a little bit high, and here comes Dennis Setzer looking for the opening. Looks like he just turned the wheel, Michael, and jumped in the throttle. He, was, he didn't gain on Rick off the corner, but he did not lose any momentum. So he really, obviously, to say that Dennis Setzer has a good truck at Martin was kind of, kind of redundant. But the most impressive performance of the day, in my opinion, is this guy that started last. The 99 of Carl Edwards is right behind Setzer. He started last, but he wasn't right at the beginning of the race field. They came to pit road and made adjustments under the first caution, got that thing tuned up and going, and now he's a contender to win this race. And I think I may have shocked you with that stat that I threw out during the starting lineup. Anytime Carl Edwards has changed a motor, he's won. Well, he changed the motor today. Ray, what's going on? And Rick, he is driving chassis number 27. This has been a good one for the Roush Super Chips team. They won with it at Kentucky and at Nashville. And I asked Carl earlier today what he thought his chances were. He said, well, I don't know. He says, this is an awfully tough racetrack, and those veterans are going to be tough to beat. But it sounds like the adjustments they've made on that 99 have put him in contention. Well, they've worked to get by Bobby Hamilton because now Carl Edwards has moved into fifth position. Darrell Waltrip made the comment earlier when I told him that Carl Edwards had changed an engine. He said, I'm starting to see a trend here. There's a little bit of a trend with this kid changing motors and winning. Short track racing. Dennis Setzer on the inside. Rick Crawford on the outside. That is a battle for third. Caution flag flies as Tina Gordon slides up in turn number one and comes to a stop. And so our seventh caution comes out at lap 144. Uh, it's just over 100 laps to go. Are these guys going to pit now and say, okay, we're going to put fresh tires on? They pitted, all the guys pitted at a lap 82. They've got 60 laps on their tires. I can't wait to get back from break. And before they go to break, or before they come into break, we're going to break. Kroger 250, we're under caution number seven. Let's take a look at what we saw while we were in break. I told you I couldn't wait to get back from break. We knew it was going to be a real strategy call here, whether to pit or whether not to. Skinner was running in the second or third spot. He came to pit road, along with several other lead lap trucks. But our leader, Jack Sprague, Dennis Setzer, Carl Edwards, Hamilton, a bunch of those guys stayed on the track. Remember last fall, Dennis Setzer had about 40 or 50 more laps on his tires than John Wood did, and John ended up beating him when Dennis Setzer probably had the best truck of the day. So he lost a race by staying out, but yet he stayed out again. Mike Skinner's pit man, Rick Wren, is standing by with Wendy. Wendy? Rick, what was your strategy there about 10 trucks came in? Well, there's only 105 laps to go when that caution come out, and I suspect we'll have another 20 or 30 laps of caution. I mean, there's only like 70 laps to race. Right now, we, we can make it to the end from here, and everybody in front of us has got to pit one more time. And track position at this racetrack is really big. So I think, I, I think it was the right thing, and I really don't understand why the other guys didn't pit. All right, Rick Wren, pretty confident with his decision. Let's go down to Ray. Well, Wendy, they made the same decision for Chad Chaffin and the Dickies Dodge. He was the beneficiary of the free pass this time, and they said, look, we think Sprague and some of those guys out front are going to be forced not to pit because it'll be so late in this race, so let's come in and get those four tires. I think it was a good call. Chad made the call in the truck. He said, I just don't believe we've got any chance of staying on the lead lap or winning this race if we don't pit now. I think if you're uh, Chad Chaffin or Rudeman, some of those guys that are back in the lower part of the top 20, it was the perfect thing to do. You don't have much to lose. Come in, get some tires. Maybe the green the green flag stays out for another 30 or 40 laps, and then it's definitely too late to pit, Bill. Yeah, I didn't think it maybe was a good move to pit, but we saw Jack Sprague driving away from Mike Skinner, so Mike Skinner says, hey, I can't beat Jack Sprague. You know, after we run a few laps or after restart, he's going to drive away from me, so I've got to do something different. I'm going to come in and get tires. Hopefully, maybe he'll come in later. I'll have track position. I think Rick Crawford said the same thing. you got to almost feel like the pitting is now over, Bill. Pit road's closed for these guys that are going to be serious contenders winning this race. That was a big call for the 16 truck and the 46 truck, those guys that were up front to say, you know, we like what we got. We're staying on the track. What guys that came in, Mike Skinner, Rick Crawford in the 14 came in, John Wood in the 50 came in. Those were all top 10 trucks that decided to pit. Ted Musgrave, Steve Parker, David Rudman also contenders. Yeah, also. David Rudman, I'm really impressed with the job Bobby Kennedy 
those fellas have done with that truck because he, you know, he obviously got lapped very early on, was fortunate enough to get a free pass, raced his way into the top 20, and hey, he didn't have much to lose. There's only 23 trucks at the time on the lead lap, so hey, why not come in and put tires on? That truck was dog meat when this race started. I mean, he was the last place truck, and now they've got it in a position where he can contend for at least the top 10. Was it goof and bad? It was goof and bad, bad, bad. bad. On the restart, Dennis Setzer. Short track is right behind him. Ray? Guys, Jack Sprague has been talking on the radio thinking they will pit one more time in this race. I can't believe they would give up that track position. But his spotter, Dave Fuge, up on the top says, I think we can wait another 30 or 40 laps before we get tires. I can't imagine that they would be able to get back through as many trucks are on the lead lap, but they may still pit one more time today. Wendy, what about the 46? The 46 does plan to pit later on about 70 or 80 laps to go. What happened there on that caution, they were going to follow Mike Skinner, and Mike Skinner came down pit road past the commit line. So Setzer actually was supposed to come down pit road and follow Skinner, but he missed the commit line, so they're going to wait for about 70, 80 laps to go. They plan to top it off and take four tires and a minor track for our adjustment. I love seeing how this is going to play out. Will the caution flag fall with 70 or 80 laps to go like these guys are hoping for? Are we under green for 40 or 50 laps? And it'll be definitely too late for them to pit and get tired. Travis Quabble, our fifth place truck right there. The Lion X Toyota. Take a look at this save. The Joe RM India, the 31 truck on the inside. Whoa. Jamie Caudle in the 84 truck gets in the back of Travis. Nice little save there. And allows Shane Meal to get by the 07 of Shane C. That looked like dirt track racing. We saw, we've seen Travis Quabble do this before. Miami last year, he got sideways on a restart and, and was able to hold on. And actually, that was the start of the race. It was like the first lap, the very first corner, I think, of the first lap. And his whole sideways. season could have gone out the window. Then he stayed the truck, came back, and won the championship. Yep. We haven't talked a whole lot about Shane Bill. That's been one of the most uh, solid guys all day long. He's kept this truck right up there in the top. 10 all day long. We're on board with Andy Houston in that Team ASC CarQuest Dodge. He has moved all the way up to 8th position. We talked about the two that changed motors to start this race. Carl Edwards and Andy Houston. Andy Houston running very well now in 8th position. Great battle for 3rd right here. Bobby Hamilton and Carl Edwards. Carl Edwards trying to hold off hard charging Bobby Hamilton but not able to do it. Hamilton takes away the 4th spot. Bobby Hamilton may be sitting here saying, okay, you know, we, we're going to stay out here. So I need to work my way so I can get in contact with the leaders in case they decide not to fit. I don't want to be back five or six seconds. I think I see Dennis Setzer in front of me. Jack Sprague's about almost a straightaway in front of Bobby Hamilton. So he may say, now, hey, I'm going to go. We've got just over 90 laps to go. And here are the trucks that stopped and took tires. Mike Skinner, Rick Crawford, currently being shown in 13th and 14th position. Now, is that too far back with 90 laps to go? I don't think it is at this point, but, man, I'd hate to think I was going to try to fight off another 20 laps or so. Joe Armini gets spun around in the back stretch. We've seen that before. This time, the caution flies. Created a lot of smoke. I think that's why they're going to go caution flies. Wow, now this is what we were looking for, Phil. This gives these guys that think they needed to pit with uh, 80 or 90 to go the chance to do so. Are they going to take advantage of it or will they stay on the track? We didn't see Mike Skinner and those guys making a whole lot of headway cutting through the crowd. Jack Sprague ran a 21-20 on his very last at speed lap. His best lap on the whole day wasn't but 20-93. That's only that's a quarter of a second slower than his fastest lap of the day. I don't know. I don't know if I would pit. I don't think I'd give up the track position right now. Okay, I'm, I'm with you, Phil. Let's stay out. Let's see if, uh, see if we can get Jack and and uh, Dennis and those guys go along with us as well. And I'm only going to have 15 less laps on my tires than the fellas that pitted before, so I don't think it's going to be enough of an advantage to uh, to come in right now. That was, I think, uh, in my opinion, and I love to see how this stuff plays out, but that was the, that was the call right there, whether you pitted on that last caution or not. It might be too late now, but there's some great trucks right there at the front of the field. Like you said, Setzer got beat last fall here because he didn't pit. What will he do? Pit road's closed this time by, so we'll have to wait a lap to find out. And Wendy had, had touched on the commit line. 
once they go past that commit line, if they're on the commit line, it's a white line that's in front of pit road, and you can see it just on the inside of pit road. Down here is the commit line right there. Right at the open close, man. And if, if a driver has gone onto that line or is moving towards pit road at that line, he has committed, and he must go win. If he, if he decides to go back out on the track, they'll penalize him. NASCAR usually leaves pit road closed. You can see the green flag right there. Pit road will be open. Is he going to come in, Michael? No. I say no. I say he should. Oh, no. We're going to be wrong, Phil. And He's on the line, and he... They're all, all come down. They're coming. Going to be their last pit stop here. Dennis Setzer, the Silverado Chevrolet, going to get four tires here. Then he go, made the call. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get beat on tires this year. I'm going to have tires. I'm going to have the freshest tires in the field, along with about 15 other guys that pitted this time. Wendy. Travis Wobbleton for four tires and gas. We're going to go two rounds up on the track bar and two rounds on the wedge. Let's go to Ray. Jack Sprague is in in his Chevy Silverado. He says absolutely no changes on the chassis here, but the tires that they're putting on this truck are double scuffed. They ran two laps on the racetrack and then two more laps. So they've got been stuffed twice. This is chassis number 31. The crew says absolutely no mistakes here. This will be the win. Whoever gets off pit road first and Sprague is going to beat the 46 off pit road, then Hamilton next. Good battle for the 16. These guys have fresh tires and resume the lead. Jack Sprague leading Dennis Setzer off of pit road, Bobby Hamilton right behind him, Carl Edwards behind the four of Bobby Hamilton. And Rick, guess who's leading this race? Mike Skinner. Mike Skinner. These are the guys that elected to pit a lap a last caution. And so Mike Skinner, Rick Crawford, and David Rudiman being shown one, two, three. We'll come back for exciting action from Martinsville. India having some troubles on the backstretch. See Andy Houston, the two truck on the inside. Much like the contact with, with Darrell earlier, Joe doesn't just doesn't use the whole weight racetrack, and Andy's forced to try to get off the corner to use some racetrack. Joe was kind of crowding him a little bit. There they make some contact and uh, just created a big smoke screen in the racetrack. I don't think anybody else had any damage, but uh, NASCAR had to throw the caution flag because people couldn't see back there. Take a look at this caution from Andy Houston's onward, the smoke that he went through. Once that caution came out, everyone decided to pit. And here, Carl Edwards about to come out of his pit after his stop and take a look at the pit man in front of him. Crew member, whoa, whoa, whoa. goosed him a little bit. Yeah, he was a little bit wide coming around uh, to get that tire. Green flag comes back out, Mike Skinner out in front. Could this be the first win for Toyota, Mike Skinner? as he wants it. See Rudiman looking at the bottom of Rick Crawford there as they battle down the back straightway. That's the lap truck, the 10 right there, the lap truck of Terry Cook in between our leader, Mike Skinner, and our second place truck of Rick Crawford. Right now, Phil, there's 11 trucks between Jack Sprague and the lead. Not anymore. He moved up a couple spots. He's in seventh position. Got, got some lap trucks there, too, though. So 11 vehicles is what Michael was talking about. Yep, but he passed a couple guys just on the restart. So moving up very well, Jack Sprague. And again, that's going to come into play, the, the tire issue. Split up high there, and he's going to lose those couple of spots he gained. Setzer and Hamilton get under him. Here comes Carl Edwards. going to try to squeeze in there. That could have been a big slip right there. That allowed Dennis Setzer and Bobby Hamilton, two fellas that have had great trucks this entire race, to get by him. So not only does he have to chase down the trucks that have 15 older, 15 lap older tires than him, he's got, to, he's got to chase down trucks that have the same tires as he does. Great tight racing. Jack Sprague trying to move through the lap traffic and maybe move the lap traffic over. He's having a hard time sparing the sparing the 67 there of Kevin Love. He just can't get the job done. Here comes Carl looking up under him. You can see they're looking to go three wide down the front stretch. Finally sorts itself out. Jack gets by. 
saw Travis wobble that yellow line next to him. Wanted to get to the inside, but Matt Crafton was there. He didn't want to get hung up behind Kevin Love, which he is. Now he's able to get over behind Matt Crafton, move to the inside of Kevin Love. The fastest truck on the track the last couple of laps has been the 18 of Chad Chatham. We saw speed out of him early in the race. He's got some adjustments, adjustments and that thing's really going. Remember how just recently when he was on the back bumper of Jack Sprague, when Jack was leading, when Chad was a lap down, he's back in the lead lap now, right now in the fourth position. Remember, he almost won this race last year. He ran out of fuel with three laps to go. He's got a truck that's capable of getting up there and winning it again. He's really fast right now. Four different leaders of this race. Jack Sprague, Rick Crawford, Bobby Hamilton, and now Mike Skinner out in front of the pack. He's led six for 177 laps. Two Toyotas in the top three. Mike Skinner, David Rudiman in third. Those were the same two Toyotas that were up front at Atlanta, so obviously those teams have done a nice job getting their programs up to speed here right away. David Rudum has had to do it today, because he was horrible when this race started, so they worked on their program today. Obviously got, a, got the free pass early on, currently third position, and being able to stay up with Rick Crawford and Mike Skinner. His lap times right now are as good as theirs. He just ran a 21-12, the leader ran a 13, so obviously Bobby Kennedy... Jason Overstreet, Glenn, Travis, all those boys that are working on that truck down there, they've done a day's worth of work today and got their self right in contention here. And Hank Parker could possibly be the, the one in the most pain right now going around this track. He was seriously injured in, at Atlanta with a back injury uh, and has been talking about how it's hard for him to bend over, uh, but he is back in this truck and running great. He's running an eighth right now going to lose a couple positions right now. He was one of the trucks that pitted 15 laps before these other fellows did, so he lost a couple spots to some guys with some pressure tires, but Hank has done a great job. For him to stay in there, we've run 180 laps in thereabouts right now. For him to be in there in pain every lap and doing a good job. Jack Sprague now, uh, Bill, has gotten his truck up to speed. He must have been a little bit different on his air pressure because he was struggling the first few laps, but now he seems to be the fastest truck on the track, so uh, the traffic these guys have got to come through are pretty much going to take all the advantage away from their tires, I think, and Skinner's out in front, minding his own business. These guys are pitching the trucks down low, really having to abuse those tires right now. Perfect example of right, right there. Dennis Stetzer working underneath Ted Musgrave, had the pension truck. Here comes Bobby Hamilton, the square D Dodge on the inside, and you see Jack Sprague, the red truck, right behind the Chevy truck truck, right behind them, going to try to work his way under Ted Musgrave. This is just a great battle, not only what we see on the track, but then the strategy that gets thrown into it when you have a tire roll. I love tire rules. They have one in Bush. You can't just come to pit road every time you want. You have to kind of strategize and figure out what you want to do in order to be the best at the end. We're seeing two different strategies here make this race very interesting. And Michael, one lap ago on lap 181 was Mike Skinner's fastest lap of the race. So his truck is working as good as it's been all day. He ran a 21.09 one lap ago. So Mike Skinner out in front of the pack. Rick Crawford giving chase. David Rudiman, Chad Chaffin, and Dennis Setzer are top five. We'll be back with more exciting racing. Mark 90 laps into the race, and Bobby Hamilton had to come to the pits because he had a left front tire that had gone down. He had some pretty serious contact with the number 50 of John Wood as they exited turn number two. Hamilton running in the top ten before that come before they had that. And then they decided they had to go to the right side and change tires there, too. So a lengthy pit stop here. They thought it was only going to be the left front, and then they had to do right side tires. So Hamilton out of contention today. Take a look at what happened. Caution. Take Bobby look. Hamilton there's made some contact with the 50 truck of John Wood. I think he thought he had a problem anyway. And then John Mason contract and the left front went down. There's Kevin Love, the 67 truck. Turned around on the racetrack over between turn three and four. And so caution number nine has come out for Kevin Love on lap 192. We'll be back to clear it all up at Martinsville. AM Pacific. That race is going to be on Fox. 9 cautions have been thrown. Bobby Hamilton back in and a very disappointing day for the Square D Dodge. The truck was so strong early. 
and then an unfortunate problem with the tire. I put them down three laps. Bigger maybe he's got his sway bar arm ground off of it. We saw a lot of sparks flying as he drove into pit road, lost that left front tire and got the truck down onto the road. Wendy, what do you see down there? When that caution came out, Mike Skinner was very vocal on the radio saying he did not want to see that caution. He wants the green flag laps. Of course, they are better on those long runs. The truck started out really tight at the beginning of the race, but now it's, uh, it's turned to a little loose condition. And he said, uh, I've got a lot of rear brake in this thing. It's the only way I can make it turn. Let's take a look at the race summary as we have completed almost 200 laps. 196 of the 250 run. Mike Skinner out in front. Average speed so far, 61.9 miles an hour. That's pretty a little bit, uh, slow because of the nine cautions that we have had come out. The four Only guys here have gone to the top. Number top lap leader, Sprague. He's had a solid truck today, huh? Jack Sprague will lead the most laps and get five bonus points for that. We'll be back with more racing on speed. It's restart number nine. Out in front, Mike Skinner, Rick Crawford, and David Rudiman all stopping a little bit earlier than some of the other trucks. Now, how is this strategy playing out? Michael, I think it's exactly like we talked. When Mike Skinner, Rick Crawford decided to pit, they, they said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have these tires for the rest of the race. We were a little bit surprised that Jack Sprague and Dennis Stetson, those fellows, came in on the subsequent caution flag. But now, Mike Skinner's strategy seemed to be working perfectly along with Rick Crawford and David Rudiman and Chad Chaffin. But now the caution flag evaporated all that lead they had, and now we've got a side-by-side -side battle for the lead. Yeah, the, 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 the caution flag was the key to the strategy. Everybody made their decision and stuck with it. Now we're just going to see which one was right. Who's going to win the race? Because the only difference between these first four or five trucks we've seen all day long has been track position. And now the other difference is they're on different tire strategies. We'll see who wins. Side by side as they come down for the start finish line. And Rick Crawford crosses just in front of Mike Skinner. And so Rick Crawford being credited for leading a lap. That makes it 29 for him. Laps led, but no one will catch up to Jack Sprague now. Mike Skinner running side by side for the lead is reminiscent of Atlanta, although it was Bobby Hamilton in the other spot instead of Rick Crawford. Rick looks like he's just able to clear him. We said earlier today that that truck is impressive the way he's able to tuck to the bottom and complete passes. He used that truck and that ability to do so to grab the lead. Here we get 47 laps to go, late in the going here at Martinsville. And early on, Gene Need was saying, just calm down, let's save those tires, let's save those tires. Trying to coach him a little bit. Maybe that coaching is paying off right now. And Michael, on this racetrack, and you were on this racetrack today, you run a bunch of laps, 15 laps, fresher tires that Jack Sprague and Dennis Sutter had. It's not all that big a difference, is it? I don't think so. We felt like the track position would be the bonus, Bill. We talked earlier when Setzer and, and Sprague were underneath trucks, finding their trucks down, spinning their rear tires while Skinner was out just cruising in the lead. We thought maybe that would have erased some of that 15-lap advantage right there. Rick Wren watching Mike Skinner. Crew chief for that Tundra number 42. Got Shane Meal on pit road after a terrific run. Good top 10, strong top 10 all day long. Looks like his day may be over. Smoke coming out of the back of the 15 as he makes his way down pit road. Great side by side racing. Chad Chapman strong all day on the outside. Chad really rolls through the center. Did he Dennis get back? Chad really rolls through the center. See if he can do it again. Dennis is going to use a little more racetrack to take some of that room away from Chad Chapman. Now it's going to right there. Yes, it was. Jack Sprague saw the opening and also went by. I Jack liked Chapman. it a lot, Dennis Setzer Spotter. I liked it a lot. He just used enough of the racetrack to keep Chad Chapman from driving up on the outside again like he did on the previous corner. And also, don't don't ever discount the, the ability and the talent for the driver on the 46 truck. If he gets this win, uh, tire strategy or whatever, he was going to be a factor no matter if the win they all pitted. So he's just showing you how good he is right now. And he's setting his sights now on the 17 of David Rudiman, who's currently running in third position, but on the outside, Dennis Setzer decides it's time to make the if he can hold him down. Whoa! Rudiman got sideways coming out of the turn, and caution another one turned sideways is Ken Weaver, and that's the 10th caution oh, to come out. Now, you don't think that um, goofing water bottle <laughs> got loose again, do you? I, I think he got rid of the goofing water bottle, so I'm not sure exactly what happened there with Ken Weaver. 
but had a great race. Trying to get under. Dennis Setzer tried to get on the outside of David Rudum, and David came off a of turn four, slid out uh, to the wall. It looked like they may have made a little oh, contact. Okay. They back up. Now, oh, earlier oh, in the oh, race, oh. Wayne Auten came on the radio and said, guys, we told you about this at the driver's meeting. You've got to calm down when that caution flag comes out. You're getting too aggressive when the caution flag comes out. And we've had it come out 10 times, so he was able to get his point across, I believe, the last time the caution came out. I think NASCAR needs to have the ability to take a snapshot of the field, an aerial snapshot of the field, right when the caution falls. And then when people start abusing this rule and driving past three or four guys, Address it. Watch this. This is when 46 Dennis sets are on the outside of David Rudiman. David says, I want to use the outside of there. I want to use this whole racetrack. And Dennis Setzer had his nose stuck up there. And they made a little contact. Right about now is when the caution came out. Look at how clean the 46 truck is. I mean, you see just very little bumping and banging, but that truck doesn't have hardly any scratches on it. The same way with the 17. I talked to Rudiman before the race today, and he was really down and out practice and qualifying yesterday didn't go at all like they hoped it would and then today when the race started it looked like he was exactly right they were terrible but I talked to him before the race and I said well Dave on a day like this what you want to do is just have the truck be perfect when the race is over you don't want to tear it all to heck running 20 bits so just take care of your equipment tell Bobby and them I used to work with Bobby Kennedy I understand his wisdom and his knowledge tell Bobby and them what the truck's doing give them good input and they will make some adjustments that will make your truck better for you you know we saw the graphic earlier Daryl has won 11 times during the next Cup Series. Well, there was many of those 500 lap races here at Martinsville, and he wouldn't have a mark on his car in 500 laps here at Martinsville in the next Cup race, win the race, and not have a mark on his car. I never could figure out how he did that. Well, the great ones do it very well at Martinsville. Bumping and banging continues at Martinsville, and we're under 40 laps of racing to go to the finish of this one. David Rudiman, Dennis Setzer, banging hard. going to get back on the lead lap. He's hung around the front of the pack, and this time he will get the free pass to join the battle for the in the lead lap. We have 24 trucks on the lead lap. We'll be 25. Be 25 yeah, with Jerry Cook that's in the back. incredible. But a lot of caution flags will allow a lot of trucks to stay on the lead lap, but, and the free pass certainly doesn't hurt. Ken Schrader came off the track, and he is not running any longer in the 52, as well as Shane Meal had come off the track. Looks like Shane lost a rear end. Just the way it was smoking feels led me to believe that maybe the, the rear end went out on that number 15 truck. This track takes such a toll on, on drivetrain, rear ends, transmissions. These guys run a 643 or 650 rear end gear. These things go from 5,000 RPMs to 9,500 RPMs in the space of a straightaway. So it's really, really tough on the drivetrain. There's Shane Meal. We talked about the drivetrain. Looks like they're trying to cool cool that off. Well, that that, that grease that came out of there you were talking about, Michael. That right. grease, is, that's, yeah, just will will catch on fire when it gets some oxygen. So that's, that's how hot it is. Mike or Rick Crawford and Mike Skinner battling for the start of this one. Green flag flies again as we have 34 laps of racing to go. That's enough time for Dennis Setzer and Jack Sprague to get by these three other trucks. Oh, look at Setzer. Man, he sailed it down into turn three, didn't he? Wonder if Rudin will know he's there this time. <laughs> if he doesn't, Dennis will let him know. <laughs> this is going to be it right here. He, he did know he was there. He gave him room. Dennis is going to make the pass for the third position. Look at how strong the 46 truck is on the outside as he gets by David Rudin and now sets his sights on Mike Skinner in the 42. Wow. That's a great package Dennis Setzer has right there. Richard Childress engine in that truck. Move their shop with their entire operation. We saw at the beginning of the show from Statesville, North Carolina, from Oklahoma. Now you saw what the veteran Mike Skinner did there. He saw the move that the 46 put on the 17 by ducking to the outside of it. He decided he'd go up in that high line, at least hold Dennis up until he could get a, get a feel of what the outside might be like. Maybe he could drive away from Dennis and go challenge the leader. 10th and 11th, David Starr, Travis Quaffle, and Carl Edwards. Steve Park in the back there, 62. 
Ned Musgrave, Andy Houston, a whole slew of guys there racing for the ninth position. Travis, I believe, hit the wall coming out of turn two. Wow, a lot of action. You can't call it all, can you, Rick? It's happening everywhere. <laughs> that's short track racing, and that's the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Check out Skinner. He's been able to move into Setzer's line and hold him up. Not this time. All right. He's coming. Still there. See, Dennis has got there before, but he's not able to use the whole racetrack. He cannot keep that momentum going. Mike's taking that away from him. I think it's just a matter of time, but he's certainly slowing him up. That yes. time, it looked like Dennis Setzer even moved Skinner up on the track a little bit higher than Skinner wanted to run. Right now, see, Dennis Setzer has a half a truck, but he's going to move up. You see him move him up just like we saw him pass the truck earlier. And that is for second. And so Dennis Setzer now has one truck to get in front of to make it three wins at Martinsville. Never been done before. He's the only driver to ever win two races at Martinsville in the truck series. And he's got plenty of time to get there, too. Despite the fact that he was down on the inside of Skinner on that last lap, he still ran faster than Rick Crawford, who was in clear of traffic leading the race. That Silverado crew up on the wall watching their driver. And Danny Gill made the comment earlier. He said, I don't care how good a stuff I have in the truck. The best thing I've got in the truck is the driver, Dennis Setzer. That's for sure. There's nobody better, better here at Martin than Dennis Setzer. You know, another thing, Danny Gill has so much more confidence this year in his trip room. He told me before the race, one of the reasons we didn't put tires on last fall and we got beat because I, I, we didn't feel like our picker was really, really quite up to snuff. But right now he's got a lot of confidence in his picker. He said, hey, if the same situation happened today, I won't feel that way. I know I've got confidence in my pit crew to get the job done. And Dennis Setzer, we can talk all we want about how great of a short track ace he is, but until he gets by Rick Crawford, Rick Crawford is the man of the hour right now because he's in front. Rick Crawford has never won a short track Craftsman Truck Series race. He's won two races. He won at Homestead back in 98. He's, he was our Daytona, Daytona winner last year, so it would be a big, big win for Rick Crawford, Gene Need, Tom Mitchell, and that entire Circle Bar crew. Great. Hey, Phil, keep in mind, though, Rick Crawford has a victory here at Martinsville. Back in 1996, he won an all-pro race here, so he does know what it's like to win here, but you're right, short track racing has not been his forte so far. Uh, I can tell you this, uh, Gene Need is definitely going to need a new pair of shoes whenever this race is over. All he's done is pace back and forth down here. We'll make sure, uh, we'll keep an eye on his new balance down here to see whether or not he wears those shoes out. The past four laps, Rick Crawford has run faster than Setzer, but that last lap, Dennis Setzer is now a little fat, faster than Crawford. They're running basically the same time, the fraction, fraction of a second here or there. They're running basically the same time. Still, from the beginning of the race, we sure did like the way that number 14 truck dove to the bottom of the racetrack, and he's taking advantage of that right now. You talk about him not being a great short track racer over his career. You get a truck that'll do that for you, will just go to the bottom like his will, it'll make you a great short track driver. But we don't want to say that he's not a great short track driver. He is a great short track driver. He just hasn't won on a, in a Craftsman truck on a short track. And we'll go back to Ray's analogy with Nicholson. He's a great golfer, and he finally won the, the, the big one, the Masters. Great battle for eighth and ninth. David Starr moving up on Chad Chapman. There's a great race for 12th and 13th. Andy Houston, and oh, right in front of him. That's Dana White, the 72, getting spun around. And so caution, number 11. Stop, don't go back up Comes now. Out. Dennis Setzer had a one-second okay, one deficit. Up. He's going to be right on Rick Crawford's bumper on this restart. And like I said before the caution, the, their lap times were mirroring each other. Setzer would run a half a tenth quicker than Crawford one lap and then vice versa the next. So we saw, though, Dennis jump. When they threw the green flag last time, he was able to jump to the outside of, of Skinner and make the move there. And by Rudiman, it's the same way. So expect Rick to be defensive on this start. He needs to be def de defensive. His spotter needs to be telling him he's really good on the get-go. Watch him. And that's good on the outside. Rick Crawford has been running the bottom of the racetrack for this entire race, so he may need to adjust his line to take Dennis's line away from it, as you mentioned, Michael. Let's take a look at why we're under caution. This is caution number 11, and the 72 truck, which is on the outside here of Chad Chaffin, bringing out this flag. Well, this number 72 truck had a problem. He slowed way down and then cut low, and Steve was just on the inside of him, really didn't have anywhere to go. Steve had just moved that 62 truck 
into the top 10, just gotten around Carl Edwards and Travis Waffle, had driven up to the top 10, and then uh, unfortunately got in an accident there. He's lost a couple of spots. Have to see if he can get them back. The 72 truck locked up his brakes, getting into turn number three. Let's take a look at on board of the 11, Darrell Walter. Darrell had driven right up on the back of this battle for 10. I mean, from 10th all the way back to 16th was, was gathering up to be a great battle in the caution flag kind of put the end to that for the time being at least we still got 18 laps to go though we get a green flag here with 15 or, or so to go we'll have a good battle in the end standing by with danny gill is our own wendy Winnie. you know with only a few laps to go less than 20 danny gill is pretty calm danny what is the communication between you and dennis setzer uh, not really a lot of communication right now. We've just been work, trying to work on free the Chevrolet Silverado up all day. Uh, you know, we got the right truck. We got the right driver. I'm really excited right here. We're in a good situation. Well, we're not at all surprised that Dennis, Dennis Setzer has moved through the field. Let's go to Ray. Oh, Wendy, I'm just about worn out. I just can't do it anymore. I was trying to get the Gene Need, but this guy is running me in circles. He's back here in the Nextel Cup garage. One minute later, he's up here in Rick Crawford's crew, but I will tell you what he's been telling him on the radio. He said, get them tires good and clean, and you're going to run away from him. But I just can't chase this guy any further. Let's, let's hope Ray can get a drink or a soda or something down there. Now, Rick, Gene and I worked together for three or four years. He's not that fast a guy. Now, well, Ray, we have to put Ray on a little bit of an exercise program. Kind of tells you how fast Ray is. <laughs> yeah, he probably is just avoiding Ray is what, what's happening. He sees Ray coming and says, I don't want to talk to anybody. I'm out in front. My truck's running well. Uh, him, him saying he hey, can guys. run away. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Ray. Hey, Rick, are you guys getting plenty of exercise up there in the booth? I know it's very strenuous to reach over to pick up the paper and stuff. We walk 100 miles down here. What are you talking about? Hey, Ray, but, we have to sit down. We stand up. I know. We look at monitors. We look at scoring. There's all kinds of stuff to do up here. Okay. Plus, plus it's hot up here, Ray. You ought to feel how hot it is. I'm, not, I'm uncomfortable. And, yeah. the, and catering is behind. Try, Which, try these fire suits at Kansas City in July, Michael. It's a blast <laughs> down here. <laughs> Ray, go ahead. Just so you know, Gene was right behind the ambulance. So if you want to try to track him down and maybe maybe cut him off, uh, I might you need to do get, that. I might have to get some oxygen. I don't know. But anyway, what do you guys think? What is the chances of Cropper holding off the 46 back here? Is it possible, or is this a done deal? No matter how few laps we have at the end, I don't think it's a done deal. Do you, Michael and Rick? I mean, they were running the same lap time. It all, I think the restart is going to be key. If, if Dennis Setzer can jump on the outside of Rick Crawford like we saw Dennis do a couple, three times, then he may get the measure of him. But if Rick Crawford can keep him behind him until we get the air pressures built back up, maybe he's got a chance at holding him off. It was impressive to watch Setzer go to work when they threw that last green flag, wasn't it? Boom, on the outside, he passes one truck. Boom, he ducks to the inside and gets the next one. So I know this partisan crowd, we've got a ton of people here watching this race. We're down to where we're going to have a restart here with 13 to go, and no one knows who's going to win this race. And, it, and throw the strategy out. This is just two guys buckled in, ready to do battle. Daytona had a, just a fantastic crowd. Atlanta had a record crowd watching the truck series. And now Martinsville also with a record crowd to see Craftsman Truck Series racing. And it has never been better. In all 10 years that this series has been running, this is the most competitive. And Rick, don't forget, we've got Mike Skinner, a former winner here in the Craftsman Truck Series, and a champion, and three-time champion, Jack Sprague, in third and fourth. If these guys get together and slip, hey, we may have a different winner. <laughs> exactly. And another guy that's been just amazing today, as impressive as Rudiman, maybe even more so, is John Wood. His truck wasn't any good early either. And they've adjusted it. He won here last fall. Now he's in, a sh in shape to battle for the win again here today. They come to the start finish line, 13 laps to go. The green flag flies, and Rick Crawford will try to hold off short track eight Dennis Setzer. Matt Kraft and David Ruderman got together. Look oh. at Dennis St uh, David Starr on the inside of David Ruderman. Look at the tank on that 75, 75. Wow. But he's still going. He's still competing and currently running in eighth position. Where else could you take a vehicle like that and still contend for a top ten? Nowhere but Martinsville where you battle these turns and, and the other competitors every lap banging into each other. Hey, but you talk about Rick Crawford and Dennis Spencer. They are both extremely nice guys, but they're tough competitors on the racetrack. And they're going to go, they're going to go to the wall. They're driving their hearts out right now trying to get this win here at Martinsville. 
Rick Crawford has been involved in some fantastic finishes. His Daytona win last year was one of the closest in NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series history, and he's looking to hopefully use that experience from that race here because Dennis Setzer is going to come on and challenge him for this win. Great battle. Jack Sprague on the inside of the 16 Chevy truck and the Toyota Mike Skinner on the outside. They want to get position in case Dennis Setzer and Rick Crawford make some contact. They want to be the next truck in line. And Sprague was able to do that. Coming out of turn number four, Rick Crawford. Nine laps to go. Wow. This is good stuff, guys. We knew it would be. It always is in the Craftsman Truck Series. The competition in this series is amazing. Half a second separate Crawford and Dennis Setzer as they try to separate themselves from Jack Sprague, who's currently in the third position. Rick Crawford able to maintain about a five-truck length lead over Dennis Setzer. He's got eight laps to go. You see, it looks like he's moved up the racetrack a little bit, Michael. He's not running right on the bottom of the racetrack. Great race for eighth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. David Rudiman, Carl Edwards, and David Starr. Wow. Rudiman in the 17, Edwards in the 99, David Starr in the Spear 75. A little bump in there, Chad Chapman right behind David Starr. Of course, Carl zinged it down in that corner there, drove to the outside of David Rudiman, able to make the pass, moves him up into the seventh position. Carl Edwards trying to take over the points lead as he's ahead of Travis Quapple now and trying to jump up to that number one spot again. Things are getting crazy here late in this race. If you're watching the battle from 7th, 8th, ninth on back, they decided it's okay to run into each other at this point. <laughs> They're knocking each other out of the way, trying to gain precious points late in the going here. I think with 10 laps to go, all the etiquette goes out the window, doesn't it, Michael? Well, you know, last week in Nashville, if you're willing to run over somebody to win, it's okay at Martinsville where you're going half the speed. What about the impressive drive by Rick Crawford? Five to go for Rick Crawford. Taking those tires that were slightly worn, and driving away from the short track master, Dennis Setzer. But look how straight his truck is. He just gets on the, gets off the corner, gets enough up drive straight off the corner. Over the last two laps, Crawford has picked up three tenths of a second on Rick Crawford. Four laps to go, and Steve Park into the wall in turn number two has come to a stop, and that brings out our caution. Oh. Well, gentlemen, it's always green, white, checkered in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, and we will see that today. I bet you Rick Crawford said, oh, no, the goofing caution's out. <laughs> we don't need a goofing caution right now. He absolutely did not want to see a caution flag. He had all, about a three-quarter of a second lead and actually running a little bit faster. So the, the very last lap, Dennis, was about a tenth of a second quicker, but uh, with so little time left, it looked like Rick Crawford's race, but uh, anything can happen on a restart. Park lost a right front tire, it appeared. I think he's got a flat right front smoked down into turn one and uh, the thing was flat and he couldn't get the thing turned. Sure enough, they'll change the right sides, get Steve Park back out there. That is a team that has had horrible luck this year. Yeah, the deal with Atlanta, he was minding his own business. The guy runs into the wall and slides right out in front of him. Yeah. Still managed to stay on the light lead lap and get a decent finish. Today, he's been on the lead lap all day long and just now uh, with the flat tire, he's going to lose it. Difference in crew chiefs, Danny Gill sitting up on top of the war wagon, Gene Need not even wanting to watch. Personalities, that's what makes this sport so much fun to be a part of, whether it's the drivers, the crews, or the wives, as you see there, that's Mike Skinner's wife. Everybody has a different personality, but one common thread that's sown through everyone is competition, the desire to beat the other guy. Like Phil said earlier, you won't meet a couple nicer guys than Dennis Setzer and Rick Crawford, but right now, there's no telling what they would do to make sure they get the win, get this wet race win. Not to each other. You know, those guys aren't going to compromise each other, I don't believe, but they are going to give it their all. Nice guy out the window. Let's take a look at how Steve Park came to a stop in turn number two. See there, the tire's flat. He did a great job of keeping from making real hard contact. I think he made some slight ah. contact. There's a slight contact to the wall, but that could have been a lot of contact. It's, it's, uh, you, you lean on that right front tire so much going in the corner there when it goes out from under you there's really nothing to keep the thing from, from going straight into the wall and Steve has been a he, he'll be a real he'll lose to the free pass rule today so many trucks on the lead lap now he's back at 26 or 7 Mr. Martinsville the Martinsville master Daryl Waltrip currently being shown in a 12th position he's had to bump and bang his way around the track today I am so, Andy Houston. 
I am so proud of that man being a little bit up in the years. Not sure exactly how old he is, but you can't tell he's a, as competitive as ever. He likes to get out there and, and mix it up. You know, we talk about him winning all those races and, and not having any any uh, <laughs> not having any marks on his truck or car. Well, he's, he's back in the middle of the pack, and we're going to get some marks. Ray, hey Ray, who have you caught up with? Well, believe it or not, I've got him corralled into the uh, crowd into the area here. What are you telling that guy? I know everybody gets a little nervous with these green-white checkers, but what was that about a dash for cash? Uh, just, you know, back home, dirt racing, we used to have a little dash for cash. They're just three-lap sprint races for whatever they want to pay, and that's all we got here. What'd you tell him about getting ready? There's something about combing his hair, right? Uh, Rick's a little fussy about his hair, so I thought he'd go ahead and get that ready. <laughs> <laughs> all right, these guys are ready for that green-white checkered. We've reached lap 250, but we've got three to go. In the NASCAR Draftsman Truck Series, we always end under green flag conditions, so we will extend this race. It was scheduled to go 250 laps. We're past that now, but we will always go green-white checkered, and we will have a single-file restart since we're obviously un inside of 10 laps to go. What about the 2004 NASCAR Draftsman Truck Series team? Daytona, I could breathe. Atlanta? sideways to the checker. Now here, a green-white checker to see who's going to win here at Martinsville. It's all you could ask for. This has got to make pretty good TV. If it's not making good TV, it's our fault. We're messing it up because we could be quiet and watch and it'd be entertaining. And I, I don't think it's a situation we can say, hey, it's either going to be Rick Crawford or Dennis Setzer. If they make the slightest bit of contact, then look for Jack Sprague and, or Mike Skinner or John Wood maybe to get by. That's your top five, Rick Crawford, Dennis Setzer, Jack Sprague, Mike Be Skinner, ready. and John Wood coming to the green flag, green flag green here flag. in Martinsville. Dennis got a great start. He's to the inside. Let's let Rick know he's there. Rick got off that corner. It was so critical, critical to get off for turn two. Crawford putting distance between himself and Dennis Setzer as he comes by the start finish line to see the white flag. Darrell got spun out there over in turn four. There he is. The caution flag is not out yet. It won't come out. The white flag came out before that caution came out. So we will stay under green flag conditions. The checkered flag will come out. As he comes out of turn number four, Rick Crawford is going to win the Kroger 250. Oh, side to side battle for him or spot in the top ten. Get out. Big crash here at the start finish line. I don't know what happened. Check that out. Phil Lester and Andy Petrie had a terrible crash here on the front stretch after coming to get the checker. They were racing for position. That's being shown uh, Phil Lester in 17th and Andy Petrie in 18th. Wow, I'm glad to see Rick Crawford get this thing back on track, aren't you? Big, big win for Rick Crawford. Gene need all those guys. Ray Dunlap. Yeah, Phil, I'm with Gene. Congratulations. I guess you just told him it's time to start racing, right? Yeah, I didn't want him to burn the tires up. He can burn them up now. Tell me about that brand new truck you guys put together. Nice piece of work. Yeah, it's a really, uh, my guys did a, did a half a job on the truck, you know, and Rick, Rick drove his butt off all day. And I, think, I think we're going to have a pretty good race team in about a month or so. Okay, congratulations. <laughs> Gene Need on his way to Victory Lane once again with a brand new team. Gene needs celebrating as is Rick Crawford. <sighs> Wonder how many cigarettes he smoked there at the end of the race. Bill Lester out of the number 22. You see him now kind of catching his breath. Severe damage to the front of the 22. But obviously Bill Lester not too bad as he jumped over the wall. He's mad. I guarantee he's, he's, he's mad about what happened. We didn't see what happened. We'll take a look at it, Michael. And DW had spun in turn number four, and that we thought might have some problems, but the leaders had already taken the white flag. Well, plus Darrell got going again. He just got in underneath Andy, or excuse me, the, is that Andy? Yeah, Andy yep. in the two truck and washed up and got into him. Tried to keep it off of him, spun his truck out because of, because of getting into it. He, he was going for the 11th spot, just uh, got away from him. Pretty good run for Darrell, though, really. First time in a Toyota, and was just knocking on the door of a top 10. And here is the Bill Lester, Andy Petrie incident. 
That's another view of Daryl and Andy Houston getting together. Daryl made some contact with the inside wall. But I'm sure he had a lot of fun. He, he did a whole lot of racing today anyway. He did, and he was racing for a top 10 spot, too. Rick Crawford sitting on the start-finish line where he had just outrun Dennis Setzer to the start-finish line. DW. Looking pretty fresh, like isn't he, Michael? Okay. Wow. Looks like he can run a few more laps. 254 laps, and looks like he's pretty good. Bill Lester still very disappointed, not happy, shaking his head as he makes his way into the care center. I don't know. That's about as hard as you can hit here at Martinsville. That's Bill Lester cut torn all to pieces. Let's go down to Victory Lane and Ray Dunlap. All right, so Rick Crawford is about ready to climb out of the number 14. It was 120 races between his victory at 1998 in Homestead to Daytona, and now it's been 26 since then. But today, he showed him how in the 14. Rick Crawford, a winner here at Martinsville, and I noticed you gingerly climb out of that truck after that huge wreck at Atlanta. What an unbelievable comeback. Congratulations on a great race. Well, my hat's off to the Circle Bar race team. Uh, Tom Mitchell puts out a lot of cash out of his pocket to let us enjoy this and uh driver had a lot to do last month and the team did a lot last month preparing me another truck this year but uh gene needing the whole circle bar two team uh what a truck i mean uh, never made ma major adjustments on it all week since we've been here and uh, uh he called me down on the radio and uh that was the key but uh, i'd like to say hello to adam's mom uh, it's her birthday today and happy birthday to her didn't think we'd get to do it, but we did it. The big win at Daytona, I know, was a career changer, but Rick, you have been known as such a great short track driver, and now this whole thing came together. Well, I told a couple of uh, rookies today some, some message on how to run Martinsville, but at the end of the message, I told them, I said, get out of my way, because I'm on a mission today, because, I mean, that was a lot of pain the last month, a lot of pain for our team, and uh, we won. Well, you take your hat off and show us how nice your hair looks. Hey, uh, Gene said to get you ready, you know, so you got to take pictures here in Victory Lane today. I'm feeling pretty good from uh, the ankle up, so I've uh, <laughs> been taking care of myself the last last uh, month. So uh, other than that, we'll get the foot strong again, and uh, Dr. Barron's going to work on his summoning therapist, and, and uh, we'll put this thing in Victory Lane again. I'm glad to get this one over with today. I'll, I'll bet you. I'll tell you what, his right foot was okay today because he had to hammer down. Rick Crawford, his third career win in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Gene Need congratulating Rick Crawford. Crawford, an amazing feat coming on the heels of that amazing accident in Atlanta. We take a look back. This was one month ago. Tina Gordon having some trouble getting back on the track. Watch on the outside. Dennis Setzer will go by, and that's Rick Crawford right there. Oh. Unbelievable accident. Oh, and good. it gets worse. The look throttle it. stuck. Rick Crawford hits the wall in turn three, finally comes to rest in front of the grandstands. He can't see. He's knocked out right now. He told me that impact with the outside wall actually knocked him out. The first thing he remembers is Gene telling him to turn off the switch because the throttle was hung still in the infield. And now, look, here he is in victory lane in Martinsville. The next race. That's how you come back, isn't it? Unbelievable. And that's with a broken foot. Rick Crawford enjoying his first short track win of his NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series career. We'll come back with more. Take a look at the unofficial results that that amazing crowd was able to see here today. Rick Crawford, your winner, Dennis Setzer, holding on for second. John Wood and Mike Skinner came across the line side by side, as did Carl Edwards and Matt Kraft, and it was too close to see who finished where. And he used to soldier down for a 11th place finish. Hank Parker in a lot of pain all day. Ends up finishing 12th in his Toyota. Bill Lester and Andy Petrie, you see 17th and 18th unofficially involved in a little problem. We'll show you just a few moments as soon as we get done with results. Darrell's the last truck on the lead lap. He finished 24th because of that late spin. Park, he was 26th after that problem with the tire late in the going. Couple trucks, few laps down. Shane Meal, Ken Schrader, the only two trucks not able to complete this race. And Bill Lester coming off of the track, going to the care center, not happy at all. And a lot of damage to that number 22 truck. I think that's as hard as you're going to hit here at Martinsville. That whole front end was wiped off the 22 truck. The official telling him, 
Bill, we need you to go to the care center. Bill was on his way somewhere else. Let's take a look at what happened. Coming off turn number four here, top of your screen. Right there, you see the, the two trucks get together. It looked like Andy just got sideways. His truck got sideways on him, and in correcting, he got into Bill. Certainly nothing intentional, just uh, racing hard for the checkered. It looked like maybe the Petrie truck got loose. Yeah, and they were racing for position. And let's go down track side with Wendy Norris, the second place, Dennis Setzer. Well, Dennis Setzer, you came through the field pretty quickly at the end there, but it came up a little bit short. Would you change your strategy looking back at it? No, not at all. You know, that was the right call at the time. Uh, we decided to wait a few laps to pit, and, uh, you know, we hoped it to be 20 or 30 before the call should come back out again. Unfortunately, it was 10, but, uh, you know, that's just the deal. you got to make a call. It's not always exactly what you want after you see the end of the end results, but you can make a call and you stick with it. How was it out there? Was it as tough as everyone was saying? It was tough. You know, all the trucks are very close, but I'm proud of Silverado. You know, they put a lot of effort into this deal. Had Silverado's uh, second and third today. So, you know, team just put a lot of effort into this program. I'm proud of them. All right, right next to us is Jack Sprague, finished uh, third. You look like you were having fun out there. I was having a blast. I mean, uh, you know, the Chevy Truck Chevrolet was awesome all weekend. We sat on the pole. We led, I don't know, maybe most of it, maybe not, but it was close. And just had a great truck. Uh, the first set of tires, we got a flat in the right front or a hole in it and didn't know it and it just got terrible and then uh you know we changed the tires and that set, that middle set it was awesome i could drive away from them and i was a little afraid going to the third set because they're always just a little different and they were it's a little too tight in the center for me to to make a run at them but we got back from ninth to third at the end there just want to thank chevrolet and uh all these sponsors south and transmissions vortex engines xm radio onstar uh quadra steer articat everybody involved i mean We've had a couple tough races until this one, and this isn't my best track by any means. And to run third here, I guess this is the fourth time, right? It is. Fourth time. Well, well that's all right. It's better than fourth, so uh, <laughs> we'll take it. All right, Jack, let's go to our Ray Dunlap. Well, John Wood had a brand new truck here today, and they did an awful lot of testing. i got to believe that you could get a smile after finishing fourth, 19th, and a hard-fought day out there. It was. I mean, up until, like, lap 100, I think we were running about 23rd or something. I'm thinking, man, I... This day can't get any worse. I wish we could blow up or crash or something. And all of a sudden, we came in for our first pit stop, and everything just took off. I don't know if we had a bad set of tires or if we made just the, the, the right adjustments, but um, all in all, we had a, a great truck today. I know we had a top five truck. It, it, uh, it showed because we ended up fourth, but I think if we'd had a few more laps, I probably could have done a little better. We had a few more laps on our tires than, than the other guys in front of me, and um, we just need more laps. Talk about the start of this season. How about the big picture? Uh, it, it's good to... to you know, be up front in the, in the point standings this early on because it just gives you momentum throughout the whole season. Uh, we had a great finish at Daytona, not so great at Atlanta, so we needed this to, to really keep our spirits up and to keep everybody going in the shop. But, you know, they, they've done uh, awesome so far. They've kept their confidence up in me, and, um, you know, it, it showed today. Strong like bull. Strong. <laughs> and this is Mike Skinner right here. You, you were good, too. You got uh, you get right behind him in fifth. Not so bad, eh? He showed a lot of... A lot of maturity today and a lot of professionals. And he could have knocked my ass out of the way a lot earlier, but he did a good job. Passed us clean. I'm proud of him. Good All right. Job. Right there's fourth and fifth for you here at Martinsville. Wendy? Well, DW, you were one running really well there until that end spin. Yeah, that green, white, and checker kind of did me in. Uh, the two got into somebody off of turn two over there, and they got hung together. I got a run on the two, and then we got down here to turn three. And, and I, they'd gone three wide a couple of times a day, but it wasn't going to work that time. He and I got together, and then somebody got in the back of me and spun me all the way around. But, you know, I, I knew that was, that's Martinsville, that's Bristol. You go to these bull rings, you got to play like a bull. So what's harder, the booth or back out on the track? I'm tired. I mean, you know, I'm tired. Of, I'm glad I had all those cautions. Good grief, it seemed like we rode around under But did you have fun? I, oh, yes, I'd be ready to go tomorrow if I had to. <laughs> all right, DW. Uh... Hey, Mike, you said he could fill in for you. Yeah, well, I could fill in for him for about 250 laps. <laughs> All right, back to you guys. Thank you, Wendy. He, uh, he doesn't have to drive, so he'll get in the golf cart. We'll take a look at the point standings. Carl Edwards, with his sixth-place finish, moves to the top of the standings. Then it sets their, his Silverado right up into the middle of things with that win today. He's only 31 points back. Mike Skinner up into the top five and fifth, and Matt Creffin's had a very consistent good year. Had a good fifth-place finish at Atlanta and, and a seventh-place finish here. Got off to a start like I think Kevin Harvick would be proud of them for. You know, they've just had three races together, real consistent and steady. They got something they can build on there with that six truck. Well, when a new manufacturer enters NASCAR, people tend to sit up and take notice. So 
we'd like to continue to shed light on this development with our Toyota Spotlight. Toyota added a eighth driver to their stables today in DW. And it was a good addition. Jeff Hammond and Larry McReynolds helping him around the track. Mike Skinner had the best run for the Toyotas today, coming home in fifth position. And he led a few laps out there. Behind the 14, Rick Crawford, our eventual winner. Toyota doing very well. They've had a couple seconds now and a fifth in just their first attempt in the upper series of NASCAR. Of course, Rudeman got their first pole for them over at Atlanta, so that truck mixes in just fine with all the other manufacturers. You know, you see great battles from Chevy and Ford. Toyota's just kind of joining in. They're doing a nice job of being competitive early in the going. Um, be interesting to see if they're able to develop and get even stronger as the year goes forward. It won't be long before someone from Toyota will be standing in victory lane as Rick Crawford is doing the hat dance now. We'll come back to close out today's Kroger 250 on speed. Well, thank you, Rick. A big win at Daytona, then a pair of sevenths has brought Carl Edwards to the point lead, 22 points ahead of Carl, or, uh, ahead of Travis Quapel. But you told me that was a pretty rough day out there today. Yeah, I was telling you, that's the, the most violent race I've ever been in, and, and I wasn't even mad. I mean, that was just, I was just sitting there banging off everything. Uh, Got to thank Kroger, you know, thank Roush Racing, Ford. It was good to see Rick Crawford in victory lane. I don't think any of these dents or marks are from Rick. I don't think I ever got up to him, but, but you know, I could go down the truck and name a few guys that uh, we ran into today. That was just wild, but, I mean, that's Martinsville. It was so much fun, and uh, the only thing I regret is I got Steve Park and cut one of his tires there, and that was a complete accident, but, uh, man, fun for Super Chips, fun for me. I'll tell you what's a little weird, though. You changed engines and went to the back, and that usually means you're going to win, and you didn't win today. What's up with that? I tried to uphold that record, but it didn't work out. We, uh, we were a little bit tight, and... Uh, I could drive it in deeper, run into more stuff, do whatever I wanted, and I, I didn't go any faster. So, uh, you know, that's that's uh, a point today for us, just making the best out of the uh, the bad stuff. Got to say hi to everybody back at the shop, watching Dad and Mom and everybody. And, uh, man, I'm having a blast. It's so much fun. Well, now you got a couple of weeks off again and wait for Mansfield. But he will be the point leader for another five weeks until we go to our next race. Carl Edwards with a seventh-place finish. Wendy? Matt Crafton with a sixth place finish today. You finished fifth in Atlanta five weeks ago. You got to be pretty happy with that consistency. Yeah, real happy with consistency. Just got to work on our qualifying effort a little bit here. That's all we worked on all weekend was our long runs, and truck was good on long run. I wasn't looking forward to those last two, three yellows we had. The thing would just keep coming on the long run, and I was wanting those, and I know we could have ran the 50 and the 42 down. Now, when I talked to you earlier in the weekend, you said I was miserable with that time off. What were you doing in those five weeks since Atlanta? playing with my little GM Goodwrench RC car, and I learned a little bit with it. I, it looks a lot worse than this thing. I tore my little RC truck up quite a bit, but this GM Goodwrench Chevy, and these guys give me good pit stops all day, and I mean, can't ask for anything more, and they give me one of the best trucks out here and finish sixth with it, and they better watch for this GM Goodwrench Chevy team all year. All right, Matt Crafton. Hey, any of you guys up there have RC cars? I can't say that I do have an RC car. I had one, and my dog, he got it, and left here that night. <laughs> Your RC car wasn't fast enough. Mansfield Motorsports Speedway is the next stop for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, the Ohio 250. That's May 16th. Tomorrow's race, can Jeff Gordon continue the domination at Martinsville? That race taking place on Fox, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific time. The Advanced Auto Parts 500. A great finish, guys, to a, a short track race. We were expecting this. We were expecting great racing, and it happened exactly the way we expected. We, we were impressed with Rick's strut from the beginning of the race. We liked the way it would turn in the center of the corner. He had it. He was heated up with pressure there. He had a green-white checkered with, with the master of Martinsville, Dennis Setzer, right on the back of his truck. So he not only got a win here on the short track, he got it with the, mo the, the, the worst possible scenario, Dennis Setzer right on his tail. And we like the fact his pitch strategy. He and Mike Skinner pitted about 15 laps before Dennis Setzer jack sprayed some of the other drivers and was able to hold off Dennis Setzer with a little bit fresher tires than he had. Another great race in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Darrell Walter bringing the excitement to the coverage. For Wendy Norris, Ray Dunlap, Michael Waltrip, Bill Parsons, I'm Rick Allen saying thanks for joining us. We'll see you in Mansfield.